A Theory and Treatment of Your Personality, A Manual for Change by Dr. Gary A. Flint, read by Denny Van. Introduction. This book is intended as a guide for individuals who want to make changes in their personalities and for professionals who may want to use it in their practice. The purpose of this book is to provide you, the reader, with the understanding I have gained by developing, refining, and working with this treatment method over the past 12 years. Reports from internet users, colleagues who are using it, and my own experience confirm the process healing method is a respectful, effective, and safe way to treat self-destructive behaviors, beliefs, painful emotions, and memories. This book is both a step-by-step -step tutorial for how to use the process healing method and a presentation of the theory behind the method. The first three chapters have been available on the internet since 1998 and have been downloaded and read by several thousand people. These chapters are described these chapters describe the process healing method in enough detail so that many readers have experienced the intervention just by reading the chapters. Many have gained a deeper understanding of themselves and realized the positive changes in their lives by using this method. Throughout this book, the aim is to provide you with enough information in a tutorial style to guide you in the process of speaking and responding to any barrier blocking treatment. This is an effort to make the book easy to use as possible for both the non-professional and for the mental health professional willing to explore a new treatment approach. This approach is a useful adjunct, not only to the mental health profession, but in the mental profession as well. Some of the constructs in the theory are different from those in common use. It may be helpful to the mental health professional if I point out some of the underlying assumptions of this model of personality development and treatment. Number one, the subconscious is a language process independent of conscious and unconscious activity and of all memories. It has the capacity far beyond our expectations, such as being able to work independently of our personality to treat negative beliefs, memories, and experiences. The subconscious will understand and learn as you read this book. Number two, the conscious and unconscious constructs represent active memories and related neural activity. Memories are either dormant or active in the conscious or unconscious active experience. Dormant memories do not take part in creating behavior. Only memories in the conscious and unconscious active experience take part in creating behavior. Memories are not stored in the unconscious or subconscious, which include only active memories. Dormant memories are simply inactive memories in the brain and body. Number three. Internal and external stimulation, including our behavior, triggers relevant dormant memories into active experience, while other no longer relative active memories become and remain dormant. Number four, dissociation is a natural process and is present in everyday behavior. For instance, your awareness of your body when you move or get out of a chair is dissociated information, namely, the information is not available in the conscious experience. In addition, dissociation is a process used during times of trauma, 
when we dissociate the information that would be too uncomfortable to bear, I further assume that amnesia caused by the dissociation process, namely dissociative parts and memories, is different from the amnesia caused by severe novel trauma, which causes amnesic parts and memories. While any individual may have both amnesic and dissociative parts, two different processes cause them. Amnesic parts and memories naturally include dissociative parts and memories when adaptive. Number five, internal and external stimulation create memories, determine, these, these determine everyone's behavior. I'm gonna read that again. Internal and external stimulation and active memories determine everyone's behavior. There are two kinds of memories, content memories, which involve sensory experiences and emotion memories. There are three state-dependent content memory structures that contribute to running our behavior. Number six, memories have unique structures that associate with a collage of previously learned memories and emotions to create our behavior. The most helpful or fitting active content and emotion memories assemble in a collage that associates with a unique memory structure. This memory structure represents our reaction to the current experience. For example, it causes our own current behavior. Memories are recycled repeatedly in different combinations to create new memories for new behaviors. Number seven, all brain and body activity is run and managed by memories. This means that it is possible to change memories in order to treat learned mental and physical issues. I use many constructs in this model of the personality. The constructs, of course, are not real. They are metaphors for what is real in our minds and bodies. However, once the constructs and theories are absorbed, they provide a language with which to communicate with the subconscious in such a way as to cause change in a problematic issue. You may find the theory complex until you learn and become familiar with its concepts and the entire model. However, it is not necessary to understand the theory in order to begin your treatment process. The theory comes in handy for treating more complex structures. However, by communicating with the subconscious, you can simply work with it to identify the next appropriate intervention and the solutions to barriers. The more you use the process healing method, the more skillful you become and the more you will trust the model to simplify and treat complex problems or issues. The constructs or metaphor used are powerful tools for communication. They effectively guide the subconscious to make changes in memory. For example, remove negative emotions from memories, which in turn will cause change in behavior. For many mental health professionals, the constructs and terms used in this book are outside the box of common definitions. I have therefore included both an alphabetical glossary, see Appendix 3, and a glossary of concepts, see Appendix 4, to help you organize and understand the definitions and constructs as useful tools. I encourage you to refer to the glossary whenever confusion arises with the concepts of process healing. The memory structure is a key construct in this model. All memories have a unique memory structure and a collage of memories that associate with 
or to the memory structure. After using process healing for several years, I discovered that memory structures could form complex structures that could stop the treatment process. I had to treat these complex structures differently from the basic structures to successfully resolve an issue. The basic memory structures is a building block that explains most problematic memories that form under conditions ranging from mild, falling out of a tree, to severe traumatic experiences, systematic torture, for example. After using process healing for several years, I faced a barrier of even greater complexity. This was one that I could not treat with the subconscious and the usual treatment method. Now, when I have identified this new barrier in a patient, it is usually easy to treat. I call these barriers fields, which I talk about briefly in chapter six. Flint MD presents a more detailed presentation of the theory and treatment fields. When you run into a barrier or treatment not addressed in this book, it is time to problem solve. I give many examples of problem solving throughout the book, but remember, the power of the treatment process is in the metaphor or construct use. So feel free to create as many metaphors or constructs as you need to be successful. I have often found that even if you suggest an inaccurate metaphor, the subconscious may use it correctly to resolve the barrier. The point is, do not be afraid to be creative with metaphors. The worst that can happen is that they will not work. When they don't, just reassemble the constructs and create a new metaphor. Keep trying until you get the result you're looking for. The definitions presented here of the conscious, unconscious, subconscious, and dormant memories may also be new to the health professional. Rather than lump dormant memories into the unconscious or subconscious, I separate them. I consider the unconscious an active process because it influences our behavior and the conscious mind is obviously an active process. Only active memories in the conscious and unconscious experience, not the dormant memories, are used to create our behavior. I call the active memories an associated neural activity in the conscious and unconscious the active experience. Dormant memories are not active and therefore not available for creating behavior. However, dormant memories may become active when triggered into the active experience. What separates the active conscious experience from the active unconscious experience? Well, because disassociation Dissociation is a process that is generally believed to be used to hide memories. I decided a dissociation process would be an excellent adaptive process that would serve to move active conscious experience into active unconscious experience. Hypnotic suggestions, deliberate repression, and skills such as composing speech are examples of the use of dissociation to move a conscious active memory to an unconscious active memory. In this model, the problematic memories and behavior take place as active memories in the conscious and unconscious experience. Consistent with other models, I use the subconscious as an inner self helper and have discovered that it has an enormous capacity to make changes in memories and behavior. Almost all of my patients have easily accepted this model using conscious, unconscious, subconscious, and dormant memories as its basic constructs. Process healing is an effective treatment method that people without training 
can use to treat many issues. Many people have had success working on their own without professional help. I recommend the lay, that lay people using the process healing method have a therapist with whom they can consult. Anyone with a history of mental illness or severe symptoms should be in therapy before using the process healing method. Lay persons should not try to use, use it with anyone who has a history of mental illness, who is taking medication or who is diagnosed with mental issues. The more professional training and experience that a therapist or lay person has, the more the process healing method will be useful to treat complex personality and mental health problems. This book is written for free to use. This book is written to free you to be creative when using the constructs to solve barrier and stop treatment. I'm gonna do that again. This book is written to free you to be creative when using the constructs to solve a barrier that stops treatment. I have tried to teach the process healing method by showing the way I use it in my successes and some of my failures. With practice, you may become skillful in using the process healing method to quickly to eliminate and gain freedom from problematic issues. Without further intro introduction, I leave you, the reader, to explore the process healing method and to determine its usefulness in the treatment of your own painful memories, beliefs, or behaviors. Gary A. Flint, PhD, Vernon, British Columbia. Part one, for the self-help reader. Chapter one, the discovery of the process healing method. The process healing method is a treatment intervention for a wide variety of mental health issues. The discovery of the process healing method took me by surprise. I was an experimental psychologist, a man of science, and though what I was seeing was extraordinary, I could hardly deny what was happening before my eyes. The theory behind process healing is unusual and forced me as a psychologist to shift my way of thinking about what causes us to think and behave. This is a shift that I invite my colleagues to make with me. A major part of this shift in thinking is that this method uses the subconscious in all stages of therapy. The subconscious is a part of us that has been there from the beginning. It is a brain process that starts to learn before we have sensory experience. I learned to trust the use of the subconscious to direct treatment, to do treatment interventions, and to certify the adequacy of my metaphors designed to model our mental processes and behavior. This first chapter takes you through the experiences that led me to this novel understanding. You may wonder if the process healing method is worthy of study and use by either individuals or mental health professionals. Here are some empirical support for the practical effectiveness of this model. Dr. Hoken Andrade, MD, Personal Communication, January 10th, 2001, spearheaded finding an effective treatment method for patients served in 11 outpatient clinics in Argentina and Uruguay. He was looking for treatment methods to get better results. About 16 years ago, his clinicians started experimenting with thought field therapy, Callahan, 1985. This treatment involves tapping on acupressure points to remove pain. For 15 years, the research team collected data to assess effectiveness of treatment. The team contacted patients who had received treatment in a double blind format at three, six, nine, and 12 months. Andrade and Feinstein, 2003. They found the tapping treatment routinely achieved 60 to 70% positive outcomes with 29,000 patients. In 2001, 
Dr. Andrade, Personal Communication, January 10th, 2021, discovered the process healing method by visiting my website, Flint 2005. By following the instructions of the process healing course, he learned how to teach the subconscious to treat trauma and tried this treatment method in several clinics. With the first 64 patients who were failures with routine tapping, he realized 60% positive results. With more experience and some coaching after treating 200 patients, he found that he obtained positive results with 65% of the patients treated. The process healing method would probably be effective with all the success cases he had previously treated with tapping. If this were true, then one can ask estimate that process healing would be effective with 84% of patients who came to the clinics. The discovery of the process healing method took me by surprise. The subconscious could do the treatment inside the patient. The subconscious learned the tapping treatment method as the patient did the thought field therapy interventions. This discovery process continued over the next 12 years of personal study and research. Trained as an experimental psychologist with the emphasis on the theory of learning, I studied the behavior of rats, pigeons, and squirrel monkeys. This training taught me that observation was important. Skinner, 1953, Flint, 1968. I now use this practice of observation in my work with patients. I carefully watch and listen to my patients to notice what I do that causes change in their present experience and in their experience of their issues. I have little formal education on clinical theories to interfere with my insight into personality dynamics. This combination of observation ignorance of clinical theory, and training in hypnosis, neuro-linguistic programming, and several new effective treatment methods resulted in the development of process healing as a powerful treatment method. Preliminary research shows that the process healing method is remarkably effective. The subconscious is explained further in chapter two. My patients taught me that the subconscious is a useful ally in identifying and treating issues in therapy. The subconscious is a language process that has access to the neural activity of the entire brain and body. It can learn to change the role of memories by removing or adding emotions. These three properties of the subconscious, ease of communication, access to all memories, and a method of changing memories make the subconscious an excellent ally in any treatment setting. I also assume that unique memories cause all brain behavior and body processes, such as muscle movements and organ activity. An active memory, such as thinking a thought or word, is neural activity. Your automatic response of, great, to someone saying, how's it going, is a learned response caused by remembered neural activity. When you learn a memory, like meeting someone's handshake, the memory runs the body automatically to meet the handshake without your even thinking. Memory involves learned neural connections that manage your psychology to create the learned response namely to run the muscle that caused you to meet the other person's hand. Memories run all conscious and unconscious learned behavior. Mental problems or issues are memories with associated negative emotions. It is easy to change learned neural connections. Since the subconscious can change the emotions connected to memories, the therapist can try to treat any learned brain or body process when working with the subconscious. I now believe that it is possible to heal any learned mental or physical dysfunction. 
The subconscious employs our native language and is open to communication. I have learned to use the subconscious to choose which psychological issue to address and the interventions that would be best. In short, I routinely use the subconscious to direct the treatment of my patients. The strategy of having the subconscious direct treatment has moved me from doing therapy directed by the therapist to doing therapy directed by the patient. This patient directed therapy is clearly respectful to my patients. It has also changed my problem solving approach. I no longer look for solutions from my own knowledge. My problem solving has become patient oriented. I now look for solutions to problem behaviors in some feature memory, a feature of memory caused by the learning process. Some forms of traumatic experience always cause problem in behavior. Any trauma memory from the past distorts our behavior to some extent. I can treat these trauma memories with process healing. I use the subconscious to discover solutions to problems and carry out the intervention. Solving problems this way has led to the development of a model of learning and memory. Based on clinical observations and the solutions to real problems, this model is practical. Changes in patients' experience and behavior confirm the effectiveness of using interventions based on this model. The model has become a useful tool as it provides ways to explain and treat maladaptive behavior. Best of all, solutions to problems with one patient have worked with other patients. Over the years, I have been looking for faster ways to treat trauma. I learned several different treatment techniques. The most significant treatment technique learned and the basis for process healing was training to diagnose specific sequences of acupressure points to treat mental issues, Callahan, 1993. The treatment involved tapping on the diagnosed acupressure points. After I returned from this worthwhile training, my next patient taught me that the subconscious could do the tapping treatment. This internal treatment was the basis for the treatment approach that I eventually called process healing. The practice of observation and using directions from the patient are both respectful and essential when working with this theory. This respectful approach and the basic premises of the theory give flexibility to problem solving and treating difficult mental issues. The theory then is the basis for responding to and understanding a patient's description of his or her mental health issues. The keys to our personality dynamics are amnesic and dissociative parts. Largely ignored in traditional therapy, these parts act like many personalities that serve some function in our behavior. People are not usually aware of amnesic and disassociative parts. I am going to describe how I discovered that amnesic parts could be barriers to hypnosis that various pre-birth amnesic parts could disturb adult behavior. I have also found that the effects of pre-verbal trauma could have a strong impact on later behavior, while in utero trauma could cause subtle lingering effects on our behavior. Another significant finding was that amnesic and dissociative parts could fool the therapist. The possibility of deception keeps me alert to explore unusual results further. Another finding contradictory to my beliefs was that I could damage the subconscious. I will describe this later. The journey started when a patient showed me how the subconscious could teach me to do better interventions. 
This experience challenged my more traditional approaches in my clinical practice. If the subconscious could teach me how to do therapy better, why not routinely use the subconscious to become a better therapist? This patient's subconscious helped me to create an intervention to move traumatic pain out of conscious experience into the unconscious while doing eye movement dissociation and reprocessing, EMDR, Shapiro, 1995. EMDR involves having the patient focus on both a painful issue and on the movement of my fingers, which are moving back and forth in front of the patient at the same time. Though underwhelming to my EMDR teachers at the time, the intervention that I developed effectively reduced the intensity of emotional pain experience while doing the eye movement treatment. It also served to control the problem of emotional flooding when doing eye movement processing. Emotional flooding occurs when the patient experiences all the traumatic pain as if the trauma were happening again. It also clarified, again, it also clarified the role of the dissociative process. The intervention causes the experience of the active memory not to be in the conscious experience, but in the unconscious experience. My interest in theory led me to meld ideas based on learning theory, Skinner, 1953-1957, and chaos therapy, theory, Freeman, 1991, to explain the active ingredients of EMDR, Flint, 1996, 2004. The theory explaining EMDR is the, is the basis for process healing. The following is a brief introduction to the theory underlying process healing. I want to emphasize to the reader's entire personality that the purpose of this book is to provide information. I want to emphasize to the reader's entire personality that the purpose of this book is to provide information. Some aspects of the personality may be threatened or triggered by the information in this book. The treatment method which is taught to the subconscious, can be seen as the primary threat that has to be assessed carefully. Before the subconscious learns to treat trauma, all the barriers to treatment must be resolved. If some of the content of this chapter triggers emotions or internal voices as you read, perhaps you should consult a therapist before continuing. If you feel a flood of emotions at any time while reading this book, please stop reading. Use your best judgment about continuing and consult a therapist. The theoretical basis for process healing. About 13 years ago, I started thinking of the brain as a chaos process, Freeman, 1991, and wrote a paper describing the active ingredients of change when using EMDR, Flint, 1996, 2004. Since that time, this theory described in greater detail later has helped me establish rapport with my patients. I explain to patients that memories start forming shortly after conception, not after birth, which is the common opinion. All areas of the brain begin storing memories while the brain is developing. At some point, the brain starts developing responses to sensory stimulation. The auditory stimulation by words, phrases, and sentences that come through the mother's body and stomach wall are remembered. By the time of birth, the fetus may have many verbal memories, but no language. After birth, learning continues with remembered verbal memories, but now neural representations of objects and actions are associated with the words. The memory of words associated with object, objects and actions become a functional language. This language learned without sensory experience becomes the subconscious. 
because the subconscious has no sensory experience, he or she is able to see learned history and the internal dynamics of active memories. The subconscious can also control internal processes to cause changes in the experience of memories and behavior by treating the emotions associated with them. At the same time as this language of the subconscious is developing, the main personality starts learning. The language learned by the main personality initially associates with the internal and external sensory experience and later with pleasure and pain and basic needs. The subconscious and the main personality, therefore, learn two different neural representations related to the same experience. The subconscious learns without sensory experience and the personality learns with sensory experience and later with other properties. Active memories are in the active experience, which is part of our behavior system. See figure 1-1. Before I make the distinction between conscious and unconscious active memory and dormant memory, I'm going to tell you about dissociation. Because of the vast amount of information caused by active sensory experience and different memory activities, a process called dissociation is created. Dissociation reduces the quantity of information that we experience in our conscious experience. In figure 1-1, the double lines shown crossing the active experience represent the dissociation process. The dissociative process causes all or part of a memory or sensory experience not to be experienced in our conscious experience and therefore creates the unconscious active experience. Unnecessary or painful parts of a memory can be flagged by the dissociative process in order to move the unwanted parts of a memory into the unconscious. These flagged memories are called dissociated. The activity of dissociated memories is in the unconscious experience and not the conscious experience. Memories that are not part of the active experience are called dormant. While all dormant memories are by definition inactive, they are all potentially active, waiting to be triggered. They are ready to be switch switched or triggered into activity in the active experience. The terms memory, activity, or active memory used here always refer to those memories that are active in either the conscious or the unconscious active experience, or both. Memories that are available to be triggered are called dormant. The subconscious has access to everything experienced in the brain in both the conscious and unconscious experience. The subconscious does not experience any form of hurt. In other words, trauma never damages the subconscious. Later, I will explain how I was able to hurt the subconscious by having the subconscious do something not normally done. Fortunately, I recognized the problem and was able to repair the subconscious. It is important to stress the fact that the subconscious appears to be always whole and healthy with no barriers to inhibit the view of the internal reality. When I talk to a patient about the information of the personality, I explain the reasons why intense trauma cause amnesic parts. I explain that these parts are normal personality parts learned during the span of a trauma, but having few neural connections to the main personality. Amnesic parts also have executive function and can create novel adaptive behavior, while dissociative parts 
are more like skills and can only create adaptive behavior that was previously learned. Patients also often hear comments in their thoughts or experience a yes feeling while I talk. This makes the model of the personality I am presenting true for them. However, in most cases, the subconscious will communicate in the first session by using finger responses, sig signaling yes, no, I don't know, I don't want to tell you, or by making no finger response. My neurolinguistic programming training, NLP, Rice and Caldwell, 1986, taught me about auto-treatment. Auto-treatment is obviously when personality changes occur without any outside influence. One can teach an NLP intervention called the six-step reframe, Cameron Bandler, 1985, to treat issues at night while the patient sleeps. When this works, the patient asks to change beliefs or behavior when he or she goes to bed and awakens with the change completed. After an experience with a certain patient, which impressed me with the power of the subconscious, I decided to extend an auto-treatment notion. Since then, I have found barriers to auto-treatment in other individuals. The subconscious can treat these barriers to enable it to treat issues automatically and to perform independently of the active personality. The subconscious can teach the therapist. The first clinical experience, experience that caught my attention occurred when I was seeing many patients with multiple personality disorders. One of my patients allegedly had 200 dissociated or amnesic personality parts. These parts were all amnesic or unaware of one another because they could not communicate. This patient was difficult. Often, the part that came to the session did not believe there were any other parts. Sometimes, she didn't know who I was. She learned that by talking as fast as she could, she could prevent dissociation. When she dissociated, a trauma part would begin to run the body. She always dissociated during the later half of the session. The active amnesia part was usually willing to work with me. I treated parts using EMDR, eye movement, desensitization, and reprogramming, Shapiro, 1991. I had to be careful using this treatment with the patient because of the possibility of emotional flooding. This patient taught me that something important that changed my life. One day after completing the session, I turned my back on the patient to write an appointment card. I heard a loud gasp. As I turned around, I saw her pushing her chair back with her feet. The chair was bouncing across the floor. When she stopped bouncing, I saw the patient's eyes open wide and moving back and forth rapidly. I noticed that her eyes focused just above her knee. She said in a panicked tone, I see a white light, I see a white light. I calmly reassured her that her experience was not unusual. I asked if I could talk to her subconscious. The subconscious said, yes. She said, no. Most of her parts did not like me talking to her subconscious and parts. Her response almost always came out, yes. No. I asked, subconscious, are you telling me that I should do the eye movement down near the knee? The subconscious said yes. The visual hallucination immediately stopped. This experience prompted deliberate exploration, using the subconscious to orchestrate and refine my treatment interventions. From this point, I increasingly began to use a semi-hypnotic technique with my patients. While the patient was awake, I used my finger, used finger responses to talk to the subconscious. I communicated by asking leading questions to which the subconscious said yes or no. The subconscious advised me in which order to treat issues and indicated which therapeutic technique to use 
to treat an issue. I felt that my therapy was becoming more respectful to all parts of the patient while addressing treatment goals that were more relevant to the patient. Treating emotional pain in the unconscious. By working with a patient's unconscious, I developed a treatment intervention to control flooding while doing EMDR. The treatment intervention provides for painless treatment of trauma pain by combining EMDR and the dissociative process. By suggesting that the pain be dissociated while treating the trauma with EMDR, the dissociation process takes place and the trauma pain moves from the conscious experience into the unconscious experience as the processing continues. The patient does not feel the painful trauma emotion during the treatment. Stimulation of the brain with the eye movement causes an exchange of the painful trauma emotions with the relaxed or neutral emotions that are active. Flint, 1996, 2004. With repeated eye movements, the pain gradually reduces to the point where the trauma memory is no longer painful. I use this process with four or five other patients who also help the minor details in developing this treatment technique. The technique, again, the technique has been effective in treating severe trauma because it lowers the chance of emotional flooding into the conscious experience. Patients ranging from nine to 52 years have responded well to this procedure. Subconscious directed treatment. My theory is that different neural patterns of eye movement are active during trauma. This neural pattern becomes associated with the memory of the traumatic pain. Bearing this in mind with many of my patients, I have asked the subconscious to tell me the direction of eye movement that is most helpful for treating the patient. I have received many unique and interesting instructions from the subconscious. For example, with one patient, the subconscious told me to move my finger in random, smooth, circular motions while moving my hand closer to and further away from the patient. In addition, the subconscious told me that I should hold a silver pen with a gold tip in my hand for the patient to follow with his eyes. Though I forgot about the pen nearly every session, the subconscious always reminded me to use it. For five weekly sessions, this unique procedure ordered by the subconscious continued. During this time, the patient had a continuous severe headache. The headache stopped, indicating the completion of treatment. The subconscious no longer reminded me to use the gold tip pen. For this patient, this unusual treatment neutralized the pain of seven years of viewing frequent gory traumas and deaths. Discoveries, barriers to hypnosis. In hypnosis, some patients were difficult, if not impossible, to put into a deep trance. There seemed to be a barrier blocking the trance induction. While addressing this problem, I received strange finger resp responses. I discovered that pre-birth trauma caused pre-birth parts. In some ways, pre-birth parts are just like the amnesic parts previously described. However, the experience of pre-birth parts in utero is similar to the young subconscious, namely, it is always awake. The pre-birth parts learn to relay information from the subconscious to the personality. These pre-birth parts can become barriers to getting deep trance. I learn to establish rapport and talk to the pre-birth parts. I usually get them to accept treatment with EMDR or to become quiet. When these barriers quiet, I was able to put the patient into a deep hypnotic trance. Pre-birth parts and behavior. The awareness of pre-birth parts helped me to overcome barriers to communication with the subconscious. Often, while I was building rapport with the subconscious, I discovered the presence of pre-birth parts. 
When I treated a pre-birth part with EMDR, I asked the subconscious to manage the rate of experience of the traumatic memories of the pre-birth part. I provided eye movements to treat the part's trauma. This approach was effective with many of my patients. The effect sometimes resulted in a subtle but pervasive change. One case example is a patient who had a tendency to wail like a baby when she was upset. She had been a difficult, disruptive patient during treatment at a local clinic. Treating the trauma of the pre-birth part that caused the wailing made the wailing behavior stop. At the end of the session, she told me her mother said that her father had kicked her mother during pregnancy. The mother started bleeding and had a cesarean delivery. Pre-verbal trauma. A therapist, a therapist can use the same treatment procedure to treat pre-verbal traumas, traumas that occur before the development of verbal skills. One can access pre-verbal traumas by acting asking directly or by presenting stimuli to elicit the trauma part. In one case, a young boy had had 16 earaches between the ages of six and 12 months. I triggered emotions associated with the trauma of earaches by putting my hand next to his ear. After I treated this trauma with EMDR, he would allow me to put my hand near his ear without an emotional response and showed no emotional reaction. This resulted in a marked change in his behavior at school. In the next session, I tested his response to the trauma-related stimuli by moving my hand near his ear, ear, and he had no fear. I told him to imagine that I was wearing a white coat and I put my hand near his ear. Again, emotions flooded his experience matching the condition of his trauma evoked even more intense emotions than I had previously seen. I treated these emotions using EMDR. Lingering early trauma. Lingering early trauma. A patient com complained of mood swings, which resembled something like manic depressive behavior. I considered novel ways to explain the cause of manic depression, or at least the mood swings experienced by this patient and others. What if some pre-birth or pre-verbal neural activity was switching on and out, causing the rapid mood changes? Could it be that some form of trauma occurred during the pre-birth and pre-verbal periods before the brain structures and functions fully developed? I hypothesized that the specific trauma occurred and that this trauma associated with the neural activity of memories of the entire brain. This led to guessing the possibility of lingering trauma picked up in utero. I speculated that the first trauma that a fetus would experience would be the emotional response caused by the limitation of movement. The limit of physical activity causes a memory of the emotional response or at least a neural response associated with hurt. During this frustration, the brain is working without well-defined neural patterns. Under these conditions, a trauma would associate with all the neural activity of the entire brain. Later, specific areas of the brain would increase their activity and assume muscle control, midbrain activities, and other functions. Later still, those specific areas that actively serve particular functions can erase the early trauma memories. Finally, after active pathways of brain functions and muscle movements had fully developed, the early trauma memory would only remain in the relatively inactive neural areas of the brain. A great portion of the brain may not have constraint repetitive neural activity. Again, a great portion of the brain may not have constant repetitive neural activity. And this is where the traumatic memory of the early constriction trauma lingers. I call it lingering pre-birth trauma. I tested this theory with an intervention I carried out with many patients. 
a treatment I discovered by working with the subconscious of my patients. To treat the supposed condition of lingering trauma, I used a treatment inter intervention developed to treat trauma pain associated with eye position and the shifts between brain hemisphere activities during trauma. The intervention involved the Callahan 9 Gamut procedure, Callahan 1985, in the following way. Direct the patient to tap steadily on a point on the back of the hand, a half inch behind both of the large knuckles of the ring and little finger. While tapping, direct the patient to look straight ahead, close her eyes, look down to the right, look down to the left, whirl her eyes in a circle in one direction, then whirl them in the other direction, then direct the patient to hum a tune, count from one to five, then hum a tune again. The subconscious said that this procedure would work to treat these hypothesized traumas lingering in quiet areas of the brain. The following case had a pre-birth trauma, so I tried treating lingering trauma. I tapped on the nine gamut spot on the back of both hands of the patient and had the patient do the nine gamut treatment. The patient said that after doing these three nine gamut treatments, she was dizzy. After three more nine gamut treat treatments, she had pain inside of, on her side and stomach. After four more treatments, she had anger and pain. After four more, the subconscious signaled the completion of the intervention. Then she had pain in her head. I followed the directions of the subconscious. After two more nine gamut procedures, this pain was gone. The treatment was obviously having some effect on neural activity and pr produce some behavior effects. She reported that the procedure weakened self-limiting beliefs involving guilt. I used this procedure of repeated nine gamut treatments with a child. He experienced dizziness, sleepiness, and then dizziness that he described as like emptiness in my whole head with something swirling around. Then he felt more dizziness. Then he felt clearer and I assumed that we had completed the intervention. In the following session with this young fellow, the subconscious led me to develop another procedure working on the entire brain. This time the patient repeated the following intervention suggested by the subconscious. Tap eight times on the forehead and eight times on the back of his head. In the following replications of this intervention, the patient felt progressively more tired and dizzy. Then he had a headache and then he felt a little drunk. The subconscious told me to treat this last feeling with the eye movement procedure, EMDR. A week later, this patient said that he was doing better at school, that he felt it was easier to concentrate, and that he was becoming more independent in his play. The subconscious as a treatment agent. One month after I completed the thought field therapy diagnostic training with Callahan 1993, I received an incredible, incredible learning experience from another patient. This woman came into my office explaining, complaining of feeling incapable of handling her financial problems. I used the Callahan diagnostic and treatment technique to treat the beliefs, I can't control or manage my life. She immediately had the insight that her boyfriend was reinforcing her feeling of being incapable. While I was talking to her about this possibility, she said, I feel this tickle in my upper lip. I asked her subconscious, subconscious, are you trying to tell my patient to tap on her lip? The subconscious said yes by raising the index finger. I had the patient tap on her upper lip. We continued talking. Again, she felt a series of, of, of sensations at different points on her head and face. I inquired again, and the subconscious told her to tap on the points where she felt the tickles. At one point, she said, oh, God, they're going too fast. They're going too fast. 
I said, hold it, subconscious, hold it. I asked the subconscious if she could do the tapping on the inside to treat the tr treatment, to treat the trauma while the patient just sat. The subconscious said, yes. I asked the subconscious if she would do it. The subconscious said, yes. Consequently, the patient sat there with her left arm on her lap and her right arm pointed up. After a minute or so, she said, wow, all this energy is flowing out of my fingertips. She said that she had felt clear-headed and capable and knew what she wanted to do to resolve her present financial predicament. I believe her subconscious had completed treating some traumatic history having to do with competence. The subconscious, to my surprise, had learned to treat internally. This experience showed me that it was possible to have the subconscious treat the patient's issues without my intervention. The subconscious in trouble. After this experience, I systematically started to teach the subconscious of my patients how to do self-treatment, the internal tapping. I had another patient who had 60 parts that were ready to receive treatment. After treating many parts, I wanted to find out the number of untreated parts remaining. And so I asked the subconscious, to my surprise, what I learned from the subconscious with, was that she had independently treated nine parts in the preceding weeks. I asked her if she had treated, tried to treat the suicidal parts that I had identified in an earlier session. She said, yes. With further inquiry, the subconscious said that she became frightened when she provided treatment of those parts on her own. By asking leading questions, I discovered the suicidal parts had flooded into the active experience and had started to run the body. They presented a serious suicidal threat. The subconscious was frightened, in other words. She recognized the danger of suicide. The other parts that became active had difficulty protecting the patient from the intent of the suicidal parts. Since then, I usually try to treat, treat suicidal parts as soon as possible. It is easier to do this now because I have learned a strategy to treat dangerous parts slowly and safely. This strategy removes the possibility of having suicidal thoughts or parts motivated by emotional flooding. It is respectful to all parts of the personality. The subconscious can learn barriers. One of the most helpful qualities of the subconscious is that it is not subject to damage by trauma and physical sensations. The subconscious can actually see life history and help diagnose and treat traumatic issues. However, I managed to damage a patient's subconscious. This damage was easy to repair, as you'll see. I caused the damage by having the subconscious step into her body experience and converse with me directly. I wanted to expand my understanding of the internal processes and thought that direct communication with the subconscious using spoken language would promote this goal. The subconscious was able to do this and in one ses session, we conversed readily. In a later session, I noticed the subconscious was not as effective in identifying and treating issues as she had previously. Using leading questions, I discovered that the subconscious process, while in the active experience and associated with physical sensations, the physical sensations created barriers to seeing internal history and was restricting her view of the inner dynamics and her control of inner processes. I corrected this mistake by having the subconscious look through the, look through the patient's eyes while I did eye movement processing. After treatment, the subconscious again became very effective at identifying and treating issues. Since this experience, I believe that it is inappropriate and even harmful to ask the subconscious 
to run the body and communicate with spoken words. Convert communication, covert communication seems to cause no problems. Hearts can fool the therapist. One of the most helpful qualities of the subconscious is that it is not subject to damage by trauma and physical sensations. The subconscious can accurately see life history and help diagnose and treat traumatic issues. However, I managed to damn it. Oh, read that part already. Hearts can fool the therapist. The following is an example of the usefulness of working with the subconscious to solve a problem. In a, set, in a session with a torture survivor, I identified at least three new parts that I had not met in previous sessions. I asked the subconscious if she could treat these parts. The subconscious said yes. I asked her to treat these parts and let me know when she had finished. After she finished, I asked if she had joined these parts with Barbara, as I normally had. Her do. She said yes. I asked Barbara to become the active personality. She spontaneously commented that the three parts that had recently joined with her had made her experience chaotic. I returned to the subconscious to discover that I had been working with a surrogate subconscious, a fake subconscious. The integrated parts still had trauma emotions associated with them. The trauma emotions associated with the parts caused a disturbance in Barbara. While the surrogate subconscious was the active personality, I asked the true subconscious if she could treat this part. The subconscious signaled no with a thumb response. I communicated with the subconscious by asking leading questions and getting yes and no answers. It is similar to the game of 20 questions. I discovered the surrogate sub subconscious was a programmed part, a part deliberately created by the use of torture. One of its activities was to repeat, I won't do it continuously in the unconscious. This repetitive unconscious behavior caused a barrier to treatment. I, it disorganized the patient's unconscious behavior so treatment would not work. It was like receiving therapy while repeating, repeatedly singing, bongo, 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 I don't want to leave the Congo. I reassured the subconscious that painful emotions motiva motivated the I won't do it, I won't do it program. The patient learned these emotions from the trauma during the reprogramming. I stressed that the repeating re response would become less motivated as she treated the trauma emotions associated with the program. She said she would try to treat the programmed part as I had previously requested. I waited while the subconscious was doing the treatment and talked to the programmed part. After several minutes, the surrogate said, I'm beginning to feel confused. And then within a minute, she gradually went into a dormant state. My patient's eyes closed and her head slumped. Barbara returned to become the active personality. She said spontaneously that another fragment joined with her. Therapy continued. Flexibility when treating the subconscious. In a recent case, a patient came into complaining that she felt confused after she exercised. She had stopped exercising for about 10 days and started feeling clear-headed. Conversation with her subconscious suggested that there was a part that was co-conscious in her conscious experience when she was exercising that gave her the lingering confusion. I set up rapport with all parts and was soon teaching the subconscious how to diagnose and treat parts. I then ran into a barrier. I was not seeing any finger responses. I dealt with this barrier by assuming it was caused by a part. My approach was to set up rapport with the part and then treat it. I told her that all parts, including the pre-birth parts, parts formed at birth, 
pre-verbal parts, or any other traumatic parts were members of one personality. Trauma created those parts that seemed independent. They had experience in the body that gave them a false sense of ownership or fears about treatment. If they were all treated by neutralizing their trauma emotions, they could join the main personality. They would then experience more satisfaction in life and be able to protect themselves more effectively. With this explanation, I was hoping to gain permission from this part and other parts to teach the subconscious how to treat trauma memories. By being respectful of all parts and by educating them and answering their objections, all parts eventually wanted treatment and to join with the main personality. After getting permission from the parts, I taught the subconscious to locate the treatment points by tapping the points on myself. My demonstration taught the subconscious how to treat the painful emotions associated with the trauma memories learned during the trauma experience. The subconscious eventually signaled that she was able to treat a part that was co-conscious with the patient and who was the cause of her confusion. I asked the subconscious to start this process and chatted lightly with the patient as, as the subconscious continued to treat the part. After three or four minutes, the patient said she felt clearer. I asked the subconscious to signal with a finger response when she finished. Within a few moments, the subconscious signaled that she was finished. The patient felt much clearer by the end of the session. She later reported that she had no confusion after exercising. Summary. A language process starts forming in utero and later becomes our subconscious. By explaining how the subconscious and the personality are formed, one can get rapport with the subconscious and all aspects of personality. The subconscious is useful to direct the path of treatment, to help create new ways to treat difficult issues, to organize treatment plans, and to learn how to treat the effect of trauma. In addition, the subconscious can learn how to treat negative experiences automatically and independently of the main personality. The subconscious can treat active memories, negative beliefs, simple memories and life experiences in different ways. The subconscious can apply these techniques to treat unknown trauma in a person's history, such as self-limiting beliefs and other traumatic experiences and memories. While this form of treatment lacks support from published research, it has been effective for scores of patients treating themselves, as well as patients in my office and patients in clinics in Latin America. The process healing method is a treatment of intervention that developed out of my relationship with my various patients' subconsciouses to summarize the process, the therapist first educates and works with all aspects of the personality to convince the aspects to want to receive treatment and join the main personality. This approach is both respectful to the patient and makes later treatment easier. I call the process of getting parts on the treatment team the education process. The goal is to get all aspects of the personality to want to be treated and to join the treatment team. During this process, the patient learns a way to communicate with the subconscious and aspects of the personality. When all aspects are on the treatment plan and give permission, the therapist then teaches the subconscious how to treat painful emotions. Then in the treatment process, the patient or therapist asks the subconscious to treat painful or problematic issues. This tale started in October, 1991. By 1994, I was teaching the process healing method to my patients by modeling the tapping treatment process. At first, I physically showed 
each of the acupressure point treatments to the subconscious point by point. Now, a 30 second metaphor, which always works, teaches the treatment process. The next chapter, chapter two, introduces and gives an overview of the theory and procedure of process healing. It includes a transcript of the first session of the healing process healing method and several examples of treatment interventions. Chapter three describes the entire basic procedure for getting all parts on the treatment team and teaching the subconscious the treatment method. The procedure to obtain rapport with the subconscious and all parts is now routine. In chapter four, I give detailed summaries and examples of many useful treatment interventions and aids. I use these treatment interventions routinely with most patients. The theory and the theory of the development of the personality and memory structures is presented in chapter five. This is the most challenging chapter in the book. This knowledge is useful when problem solving new structures and finding solutions for complex personality issues. Chapter six will teach you how to problem solve and resolve difficult or complex barriers to treatments. Many readers won't have to solve complex problems, but the interventions are included for those who do. Chapter seven describes treatment of dissociative and amnesic parts and all the complexities that can arise when treating parts. Chapter eight introduces the more complex features of memory, namely memory structures and other constructs. These structures and constructs were discovered by solving patients' issues and are frequently found to be the cause of problematic behavior and unusual experiences. Chapter nine describes many treatments that are useful for relatively simple issues. Chapter 10 focuses on several complex disorders like depression, addiction, obsessive compulsive behavior, psychotic behavior, and so forth. Chapters nine and 10 are written primarily for therapists. Now you know how my patients taught me and helped me learn a new respectful and effective treatment intervention. For those who have read some books about psychology and have opinions about brain, mind, and behavior, I want to point out what I think may be a paradigm shift for some readers. If you can suspend your previous learning and research-based ideas and accept the clinically based truisms presented here. This book offers a refreshing description of the development of the personality and explanations for complex mental issues. Here are what I consider to be the major shifts in beliefs. Number one, the subconscious is accessible in everyone. It is not the unconscious. The subconscious is a unique process with whom a therapist can communicate. Number two, dormant memories are available to be triggered into activity in the conscious and unconscious. They are not located in the unconscious. Number three, behavior and all brain activity are collages assembled from previously learned memories active in the conscious and unconscious. Number four, dissociation causes the conscious and unconscious experience of active memories. Number five, memories that are dissociated are caused intrusions, again, Number five, memories that are dissociated and cause intrusions are different than amnesic parts. They are more like dissociated skills and most importantly, don't have executive function. Amnesic parts, on the other hand, are compartmentalized memory structures, 
Blizzard et al. 2005, created in novel severe trauma who have executive function. Number six, different pro processes cause dissociative and amnesic parts. I hope you find this book both fascinating and useful personally or professionally. Chapter two, an introduction to the process healing method. The process healing treatment method was discovered in 1994. Since then, it has gradually developed and become more respectful, better organized, and more systematic. Based on science and clinical experience, process healing is essentially an education process. I teach patients how all aspects or parts of the personality and subconscious are normal and develop from conception to the present. This chapter gives an outline of the treatment method and includes a scripted session to give you the feeling of how the method works. If you have any problems with the vocabulary, Appendix 3 is an alphabetical glossary and Appendix 4 is a glossary of new concepts. Here is a brief outline of how process healing works. The example consists of a script of the conversation between the therapist and the patient's or reader's subconscious. This text becomes the therapist for the patient. The therapist first educates and works with all aspects of the patient's personality to convince the aspects to want treatment. This approach is respectful to the patient and builds trust between the therapist and the patient. This is called the education process. During this process, the reader or patient learns a way to communicate with his or her subconscious and aspects of his or her personality. When all aspects are on the treatment team and give permission, the therapist then teaches the patient's subconscious how to treat painful emotions. At this point, the patient or therapist is ready to ask the subconscious to use the treatment process to treat painful or difficult problems. The education process, establishing rapport, the treatment team and treatment. A key feature of the process healing method is the internal treatment team, Satir 1972. The treatment team notion is introduced to organize all parts of the personality into a cooperative group, arranging for parts to cooperate as a major asset for the treatment process. It makes the treatment process safer and easier with fewer problems. It is always necessary to discuss the reasons for treatment and to resolve the barriers to treatment in order to get all parts to join the treatment team. A common barrier is the fear of re-experiencing trauma emotions. I present a strategy for safely treating extreme emotions. This strategy will be explained later in the next chapter later in this chapter. Next, I will describe the mechanics of integrating or joining parts with the main personality. I point out that the subconscious will strengthen all positive coping behavior with positive emotions so no assets are lost. At the same point, I make a double check to see that all parts are on the treatment team and all want the subconscious to learn the treatment process. After one final check, I teach the subconscious how to treat trauma. When therapists work with the subconscious and inner process, they use metaphors. There are many different metaphors to treat people. I assume that 
All change activity in people is the same, but the metaphors are different. I use a metaphor to teach the subconscious how to do the treatment process. Then I have the patient identify a simple phobia or moderately painful belief or memory to be used by the subconscious to practice diagnosis, to form a treatment plan, and to execute the treatment process. Then I ask the subconscious to treat the patient, the practiced issue, remove the negative emotions associated with that issue. As the treatment process occurs, the patient may feel the pain of the issue gradually diminish, diminish in intensity. The subconscious becomes an ally in therapy by analyzing treatment issues and directing treatment. Memory, dormant or active. Before I continue, I wanna tell you about dormant and active memories. Memories are either dormant or active. Dormant memories are potentially active, but not experienced. Dormant memories are ready to be triggered into the active experience. Active memories, on the other hand, are in what I call the active experience. The active experience includes both the active conscious and unconscious memories. The active memories contribute to creating behavior. Some of the active memories in the active experience combine to create behavior by evoking a response from the body. Changes in the person's environment are represented in the active experience. A change in the environment triggers or activates other relevant memories that can combine to create the next response. Other memories become dormant. For example, I'm going to ask a question and you will know the answer. The dormant answer to that question will become active in the active experience. Now, before you have the question, you do not know the answer. The answer is still dormant. Here is the question. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Your response to the question became active and your thought of the answer. Dormant memories appear inactive and do not contribute to our behavior, but dormant memories are indeed active, potentially, ready to be triggered into the active experience as active memories. The active experience includes both conscious and unconscious active memories. Chapter three provides more details about memory activities in the conscious and unconscious. Building rapport. By describing how the personality and subconscious came to be, one can usually set up early rapport with all parts of the personality, at least with those who are listening. Dormant parts will not hear unless they are triggered into the active experience. The goal is to get all parts on the treatment team so they want to receive treatment, to have their positive qualities strengthened with positive emotions, to join with the main personality, and later to work together to develop a treatment plan for each part. I stress to all parts of the personality that the subconscious will not learn the treatment process until all parts join the treatment team and agree with teaching the subconscious the treatment process. All parts, even the frailest baby parts, must feel safe with the idea of internal treatment and agree with it. The next step in getting parts on the treatment team is to tell them the advantages of treatment and of joining the main personality. Reasons for getting treatment and becoming one. I attempt to motivate all parts to want treatment by giving the benefits 
for getting treatment and joining the main personality. Here are the advantages of getting treatment. The parts will have more satisfaction and less pain, and the main personality will stop having intrusions or experiencing lost time. All parts will perform with full access to the entire memory of the personality. When the parts have identical memories, each part will experience running the body as one personality. This removes conflicts between parts, removes distractions, and makes all of our skills available. The main personality will no longer hide important information and will be safer. I also point out that mono personalities succeed far better in realizing their potential than people who have many amnesic or dissociative parts, Ross, 1996. Reasons for not wanting to join the treatment team. While trying to get the parts to join the treatment team, you will usually have to resolve a few objections. A part might, might think that it will die or that it will lose some or all of its knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. It may be afraid that it will have too much pain during the treatment process that may damage the main personality or other parts. It may think that it will no longer be able to protect the main personality by causing emotion or behavioral intrusions. A part may think that it will not be able to run the body anymore or that the conscious memory of the trauma will further traumatize the main personality. It may think that there will be more inner conflicts among parts or that the strong parts will not listen to the wee baby parts. The next step is to help parts that have reasons for not wanting treatment. In chapter three, you will learn how to resolve these barriers. The primary reason for not wanting treatment. There are many reasons for not wanting treatment or for not wanting to join with the main personality. The rationale for removing these barriers will be presented in detail in chapter three. Except for pain, these objections are all beliefs held by the parts. One can bring about change in barriers by using the desire or need for more satisfaction or happiness and less pain as an incentive for agreeing to change and accepting the treatment's explanations. Wanting more satisfaction and less pain is the primary incentive to get parts to communicate when they don't wanna to talk to the therapist. I use this in incentive to get parts to want treatment and to join with the main personality. It is interesting to note that the objective of getting more satisfaction and less pain is the apparent goal used by the basic neurostructure for assembling groups or collages of active memories run by the body. Treating intense fear or pain. Treating pain can cause problems. After several years of being creative with many ploys to safely treat massive pain associated with parts, I found a simple solution. This simple, easy treatment strategy works safely and in most cases, painlessly to treat the trauma memories of amnesic and dissociative parts, as well as with other trauma memories, even those with extreme pain. The subconscious orchestrates the treatment process and the trauma part cooperates by following directions. Treating extreme pain is done with a fixed rate of treatment. For example, if the main personality can just barely feel 100 units of pain, then the subconscious can treat five or fewer units of pain in each treatment. Then the main personality would not feel any pain during the treatment. 
The subconscious can adjust the amount of pain treated, the treatment rates. In the treatment plan with each part until no parts on the treatment team are fearful. Planning treatment in this way prevents the flooding of emotions by the trauma part being treated and the triggering and flooding of any other part into the active experience. All parts will be safe and usually feel no pain. However, one more precaution must be taken. Since activating five units of pain destabilizes the trauma part, successive treatments could increasingly destabilize the part and cause flooding of emotions into the active experience. A destabilized trauma memory is like a word on the tip of your tongue. It's ready to flood and become conscious. With a word on the tip of your tongue, you look for triggers to get the memory of the word to flood into your thoughts. With trauma memories, we look for ways to prevent the flooding. To prevent gradual destabilizing of trauma memories and eventual flooding, a planned rest period between each treatment allows the trauma part to relax or rest until it is stable before the next treatment. The rest period is adjustable and is in the treatment plan. This strategy using treat, rest, treat, rest, treat, rest pattern effectively ensures the trauma part will not destabilize and flood emotions into the active experience during the treatment process. Joining with the main personality. The treatment process gradually replaces all the painful emotional memories connected with the trauma part with neutral to positive emotions. After replacing the trauma pain and strengthening the positive behaviors of the part with positive emotions, the treated part can join with the main personality. All memories appear to have unique neural structures to which memories associate or attach. Joining or integrating the trauma part and the main personality involves the parts exchanging memories with each other. In other words, the trauma part and main personality exchange memory associations until their neural structures have identical memories associated with them. When the exchange of memories is complete, the main personality and the trauma part have identical memories and can both run the body with no conflict. The main personality and the trauma part continue to have their own unique neural structures. They each experience good and painful body sensations and emotions. They will experience less pain because of their combined knowledge. They will be able to avoid pain more effectively. If someone was yelling at you and was about to hit you in the face, the combined knowledge of parts could lead you out of the situation and to avoid more intense pain. The structures will feel some negative emotions, but in most cases, the outside world causes the negative emotions unless an active untreated part or a painful memory or behavior causes some pain. All parts would work together to get more satisfaction and to avoid pain. All joined parts will be in total agreement when running the body and there will be no conflicts. Teaching the subconscious how to treat issues. When all the parts say they want the subconscious to learn how to treat trauma from the inside, you must ask a demanding question. The point of the question is to contact any parts that are uncomfortable or afraid about the subconscious learning how to treat trauma. Problem solving these fearful parts will eventually get all parts to want treatment. When there are no objections to teaching the subconscious the treatment procedure, the subconscious learns the treatment procedure 
in a brief metaphor. After given the metaphor, you ask the subconscious to treat a previously identified simple phobia or belief. Treating a test issue. Treating the test issue will assess whether the subconscious has learned how to diagnose and treat painful memories. The patient will usually feel the treatment process in his or her brain or feel the pain of the issue gradually decrease to zero or to a fitting level. Usually, patients feel both experiences. This experience proves to the person or reader that the subconscious now knows how to treat trauma and emotional pain. The treatment process. Summary of the treatment process. A summary of the entire treatment process is presented in figure 2-1. The content of the memory includes the movie consisting of sensory experiences and all other massive neural activity, such as perceptual distortion, organ, eye, and muscle activity, and drug effects that took place during the trauma. The stars represent traumatic emotional memories attached to the neural activity in the content of the traumatic memory. We know this is true because after treating the trauma, the context of the memory, the movie, usually remains unchanged or expanded with more detail or accuracy. The subconscious orchestrates the treatment process using a treatment plan and safely replaces the negative emotions, the stars, with the present positive or neutral emotions, the hearts. During the treatment process, the patient notices the pain of the traumatic memory gradually decreasing. After the issue is treated, there is no pain associated with the traumatic memory unless there is some protective value to having emotions as, for example, with a height phobia. More information is given to the subconscious to help the treatment process. This information involves fields that are allegedly useful during treatment. The subconscious is told to use that the use of the bioelectric field created by the heart and information gained through field receptors in the skin cells can help the treatment process. In addition, there appears to be some primitive positive energy available from the brainstem and a field from the pineal gland that help treatment. I don't have any formal scientific evidence that these fields are useful in the treatment process. However, most of my patients subconscious confirm that these suggestions are useful in the treatment process. Barriers and disorganization. Treating parts and other bothersome issues can now begin, but not without some potential barriers to treatment. Any extra activity in the active experience causes a barrier. There are a number of causes for the extra activity. Pre-birth parts that respond instead of the subconscious, parts that demand treatment, or parts that want treatment at the same time can can cause the activity. Often, parts can wake up and interfere with the therapist's communication with the subconscious. Others positively don't want treatments. Any one of these parts, therefore, can cause a barrier to the treatment process. These disruptive parts have to be helped to join the treatment team, either by a representative of the treatment team the subconscious, or the therapist. Chapter three and later chapters provide treatment details about these and other barriers to treatment. Activity in the active experience causes a condition called disorganization, which is a barrier to treatment. Treatment in the active experience requires that the active experience be calm or organized so the structure of the trauma part does not change. 
The activity of other parts or active memories in the active experience can disorganize the active experience. The disorganization stops the treatment process. When the active experience is disorganized, the activity in the active experience changes the trauma memory's neural structure to a series of new memory structures. This is not in itself a problem because a new memory structure created once is not permanent. However, this disorganization prevents negative emotions associated with the target memory structure from changing. And hence, the treatment process does not work to change the pain associated with the target. Many kinds of barriers can stop the treatment process or inhibit communication with the subconscious. Chapter three explains in detail about removing these barriers. Giving information or looking at the barrier in a different way handles most of them. Sometimes removing the barrier involves explaining the function of the, of the brain or explaining how the barrier interferes with getting more satisfaction and less pain. Here is a partial list of the barriers. A part has just awakened and needs educating, or there is more than one part active in the active experience at the same time. Sometimes a part doesn't want treatment because of the fear of pain or loss of function or a part wants more pain and less satisfaction. Some parts have beliefs that stop them from communicating. Less often, a barrier is caused by a part without eyes or ears, or a part that is emotional or muscle activity and function, while the sensory experience of that part remain dormant. Finally, a barrier is caused when a brain polarity reversal stops the learning process necessary for treatment. Soon, you will read a transcript of a first treatment session giving the dialogue between the therapist and the patient and the subconscious. The transcript will give you an idea of how process healing works. It shows how I introduced the process healing method several barriers are resolved. I have also included examples of treatment interventions showing how I handle residual issues. There are some examples of problem solving. I also describe interventions such as tagging and treating parts and give three examples, treating shame and guilt, dreams and anger. An example of treating the process healing method. Again, an example of teaching the process healing method. This transcript is a condensed example of teaching the information needed for doing process healing with a patient, friend, or yourself. As you recall, I present a model of the development of the personality the reasons for getting treatment and joining with the main personality, and then address barriers. I found the more I taught process healing to patients, the less I had to do to resolve some barriers. I attribute this change to the fact that some apparent nonverbal communication is taking place between my patients and myself, Flint and D. For this reason, I am able to leave out most information and use a bare bones approach, teaching only the information needed to use process healing. I recommend that with your first patients, you initially give all the reasons for being treated. Then review with the patient most of the barriers for wanting to join the treatment team and to wanting treatments. This repetition of the teaching method will firmly implant these concepts into your memory. Read, again, read chapter three many times so the barriers and reframes are easily available from your memory. 
Implanting these concepts will help you remember the correct solution to a barrier when you need it. When teaching process healing in my office, I draw pictures to help the patient understand more clearly what I am saying. These pictures add a visual aid to my explanation. Teaching process healing over the telephone is different. In that case, I try to describe a visual picture to go with what I'm saying. Sometimes I direct the patient over the phone to draw some of the figures out on paper. So far, many of those who are willing to do therapy over the telephone usually have a productive experience with therapy and are easy to work with. I ask them to read chapter three, downloaded from the internet, Flint 2005, to see if they can teach the treatment process to themselves. Here is an example of teaching the treatment process to a person in my office. I have included several examples of this application. Therapist, that's me. So, would you like to have me teach you process healing? The patient. Yep, I sure would. Therapist. I'm going to try to get all aspects of your personality to join a treatment team. All members of the treatment team will want their trauma treated, their positive qualities and behaviors strengthened with positive emotions, to work on, the cons on a consensual basis, and to join with the main personality. I usually start by giving you a visual description of what I'm describing. Can I move a little closer to you so you can see my paper? See figure 2-2, next page. Patient, yes. Therapist, can you see my paper? Patient, yes. Therapist, up here on the top, I am drawing our lifeline. This point here is conception and this is birth. Sometime after conception, our brain starts learning words and phrases. At birth, when our senses become active, the objects and actions that we see and hear are linked to the words. A language forms and continues to form throughout our whole life. A, I call it the subconscious. Does that make sense? Patient, yes. Therapist, then shortly before birth or at birth, our main personality starts forming and continues to represent, to be present, B, which is you see B on the diagram. I initially draw a straight line. We start learning in utero and continue to learn all our lives. Learning means the formation of memories. The formation of memories for the main personality amass in what I call memory three. And so I draw an ellipse around the main personality line in the figure at B. Memories in memory three are used to run our body and thoughts. Memory three contains dormant memories. Dormant memories are ready to be triggered into our experience by an emotion or some content of an active memory. For example, if I asked you this question, oops, the answer is not conscious yet because the question has not triggered the answer. So you don't know the answer, but if I asked, do you remember when you last rode a bicycle? The question will trigger the dormant answer. The answer or memory awakened and popped into your active experience. Do you understand so far? Patient, yes. Therapist, now I'm going to explain how our behavior and thoughts, how our behavior and thoughts form. Here we have what I call the active experience at C. The active experience represents all the activity in the brain and body related to survival. It is where all our internal and external sensory experience, all our internal processes and the main personality are active. It includes all the content and emotion memories triggered into our experience that are used to form the next response. The creation of behavior is a recurrent process, which means 
that our last response is the basis for the next response. For example, suppose I am moving my hand to scratch my ear. My nose starts tickling. This new stimulation will result in changing the direction where my hand is going. My hand will scratch my nose. Now, what is interesting about the active experience is there it is a dissociation process, D, that causes the conscious and unconscious experience. It is the job of the dissociation process to simplify the content and emotions of our conscious activity so we can behave to get more satisfaction and less pain. There is also an association process, E, when memories in the subconscious trigger other memories, the association process allows the most fitting memories to be triggered. If it lets in memories too easily, then a pencil might look like a hot dog. <laughs> the association process is like a metaphor manager and limits which memories can become active. Do you have any questions at this point? Patient. No, of course, some people might not understand enough to ask a question. Therapist, now I'm going to talk about how severe trauma causes amnesic parts. When we think about trauma at F, we know that we completely remember some traumas. For example, I fall off my bike, go to the hospital and go home. I can tell everyone I know about my experience. However, when the trauma has extreme emotions and at the same time, there is no learned memories to manage the situation, the brain mobilizes with memories triggered by the intense emotion. When the brain mobilizes, the activated memories independent of the main personality push the main personality out of our active experience and an executive function organizes and creates survival behavior. Behavior is created from the start of the trauma to the end of the trauma. This behavior becomes associated with a new memory structure that becomes a trauma part. When the trauma ends, end, the main personality rushes in or rapidly becomes active and pushes the new trauma part out of the active experience to become dormant. Because the main personality rushes out and in so fast, there are few associations between the main personality and trauma part. This rapid departure and entry of the main personality causes the am amnesia between parts. Does, it, does this explanation make sense to you? Patient. It makes total sense. Most patients say yes, regardless of whether they understand it. Therapist, the main personality at the top of figure 2-2 now has these bumps on it. These represent amnesic parts and the upline represents amnesia. The problem with having amnesic parts is the emotions from the parts can be triggered into the active experience and distort the here and now conscious and unconscious experience. With this distortion of the active experience, the response created may not result in getting more satisfaction and might put the person at risk. Getting more satisfaction and having less pain is the main reason for treating and integrating parts. Healing is another word for treatment that will remove all the negative emotions from the memory of the part and replace them with neutral or positive emotions. Then the part can join with the main personality, I. Parts don't die or lose information. The subconscious strengthens their positive skills with positive emotions. They simply exchange information with the main personality. The part's memory becomes exactly the same as the main personality's memory. Now, 
The trauma part and main personality can run the body at the same time without conflict. They still have unique structures. The response creation process uses their combined knowledge and wisdom as needed to get more satisfaction and less pain. Any questions? Patient, no. Therapist, I want to ask all your parts to join the treatment team, J. By joining the treatment team, you all will want treatment, want your positive skills strengthened, want to work in, con in consensus, and join with the main personality. Then you will help make a treatment plan for each member, which will be approved by the agreement of all members. 100% agreement is necessary to accept treatment plans. However, I expect that the treatment of big, intense pain will worry some parts. If you look at H, I will explain how big pain is treated. The trauma part works with the subconscious, who is drawn under the active experience. The trauma part moves over to the active experience and puts a little pain into the active experience. Five units of pain is just a little of the trauma time at F. The members of the treatment team can adjust the rate of treatment until all members are comfortable with the rate of treatment. It can be 5, 3, 1, 0.5, or whatever the treatment team decides. On the other hand, if we treated five units of pain one treatment after the other, the trauma part would destabilize and flood emotions into the conscious experience. It is like a word on the tip of your tongue. The word has not flooded your experience, so you think of words or associations to help it become conscious. We want to stop the flooding, so we rest after each treatment. Over here at the multiple T, you can see the part become destabilized, and we wait a few seconds at T until the part has stabilized again, and then we treat more. We repeat the process, treat, rest, treat, rest, treat, rest, until we have treated all the emotional pain associated with the part during the trauma. Will all the parts that want to join the treatment team please join the treatment team? Any questions? Patient, no. Therapist, now I want to set up rapport with your subconscious. Please put your hands flat on your legs on the couch beside you. Thanks. Move each finger as you say the following. I am going to call the index finger, yes. The thumb, no. Then I'll label the little finger, I don't know. And the middle finger, I don't wanna tell you. In addition, no response is a response. These five responses allow me to communicate better with all aspects of you and the subconscious. Now, here comes the fun. I am going to ask if I can talk with your subconscious. Your job is to be curious about whether one of your fingers is going to move and try not to move them consciously. Now, if you feel sensations on the pad of your finger or something like that, which I can't see, you can move the finger so I can see it move. Do you understand? Patient, yes. Therapist, can I talk with your subconscious? Wait. Subconscious, the middle finger rises. This response is probably a part. Therapist, oh, the middle finger, we both blush. Thank you for talking to me. Did you just wake up? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, would you be willing to talk to the subconscious and get all the information about joining the treatment team, being treated and then joining with the main personality? Subconscious, no. Therapist, are you worried about big, big pain? Subconscious, no. Therapist, 
Are you worried that your memories will be traumatized, will traumatize the main personality? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, well, during the treatment process, the subconscious can use the dissociative process to dissociate all those memories so they will never go into conscious experience. Would you now be willing to join the treatment team? This is an example of a reframe or explanation that neutralizes the concern. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, thank you. Subconscious, are all the parts on the treatment team? Subconscious, I don't know, little finger. Therapist, can I talk to the part that said, I don't know? Subconscious, no response. Therapist, is this part a pre-birth part? Pre-birth parts learn to share information from the subconscious with the active personality and are frequent barriers to communication with the subconscious. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, would you and all the other pre-birth parts be willing to join the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, thank you. Subconscious, are all parts on the treatment team? Subconscious, no. Therapist, can I talk to all the parts that don't want to join the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, will you all talk to the subconscious to find answers to your questions and considerations? Then you can make an informed decision about joining the treatment team, getting treatment, having your positive quality strengthened with positive emotions, and joining the main personality. When I get the parts to talk to the subconscious, it saves time. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, wait. Subconscious, have all those parts decided to join the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, are all the active parts on the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, do all the members of the treatment team want me to teach the subconscious the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, you mean there are no parts that have an objection to my teaching the treatment process to the subconscious? Subconscious, no. Oops, wrong answer. Also, I don't know. I don't want to tell you. And no response are answers that lead to problem solving. Therapist, guessing. Is this part a wee little baby part that is afraid he or she won't get an equal vote in the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, well, all the parts on the treatment team have agreed to give all parts, even you, an equal vote. Would you be willing to join the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, thank you. Do all members of the treatment team want me to teach the subconscious the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, you mean there are no parts that have an objection to my teaching the treatment process to the subconscious? Subconscious, yes. Note, before reading the following metaphor that teaches the treatment process, check with your subconscious. See if it is okay to read the treatment metaphor and that it will not be disrespected in any way aspect of your personality. Therapist, quickly say or read the metaphor before any new parts wake up. You will learn two metaphors for teaching the treatment in chapter three and four. So read it. to read it here would be disrespectful to some aspects or parts in your personality. Subconscious, do you understand the metaphor? Subconscious, yes. Here, I can point out helpful healing fields, therapeutic touch, the brainstem, the pineal gland, and the heart field. Sometimes I make these connections to support the subconscious during, later during the session. Therapist, can you think of a phobia on which we can try the treatment process? A belief or trauma memory also works, or a part that wants treatment now. Patient, I'm afraid of public speaking. 
therapist. Subconscious, is this phobia a good practice phobia to try out the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, okay, imagine preparing well and speaking to 100 people. On a scale of zero to 10, where 10 represents being terrified, how high is your fear or anxiety? Patient, oh, it's about eight. Therapist, focus on your imagine of public speaking so you feel the fears and ask the subconscious to treat your public speaking anxiety. Wait, do you feel the anxiety going down? Patient, yes. Therapist, wait. Subconscious, have you finished treating the phobia? Subconscious, no. Therapist, do you feel the treatment process in your head? Patient, yes. It feels like the back of my head is warm. Therapist, different issues can cause different feelings. Is it still processing? Patient, yes. Therapist, wait. Subconscious, are you finished? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, about what level do you feel now when you think of talking to some people? Patient, it's about a two. Therapist, that's about right. You need some anxiety to do your best. Some fear may remain for motivation or to focus your attention. As with a height phobia, subconscious, can you create a treatment plan for all members of the treatment team? Subconscious, no. Therapist, did another part awaken? Subconscious, no response. Therapist, does this part want more satisfaction and less pain? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, would you be willing to talk to the subconscious to get all your question answered? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, thank you. Wait about five seconds. Subconscious, did this part join the treatment team? Subconscious, no. Therapist, does this part want treatment now? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, will treating this part be politically okay with the others? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, please treat this part. Wait. Subconscious, are you done? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, can you do a massive change history and everything? The massive change history is an intervention that treats trauma emotions that are reused with memories created after the original trauma. See chapter 4-18 for the definition of everything. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, can you create a treatment plan for all members of the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, wait. This treatment process is hard to believe, isn't it? What do you think? Patient, engage in conversation. Patient therapist, engage in conversation. Therapist, subconscious, are you done creating treatment plans? Subconscious, yes. The following example is an intervention you will learn that removes barriers that stop the subconscious from doing independent and automatic treatment. Therapist, subconscious, Will you do the change history and all memories in memory three associated with getting treatment, then treat the predispositions that respond to active negative memories and look for any belief barriers that would obstruct independent and automatic treatment? Subconscious, yes. Examples of using process healing. Here are examples of the strategies I use at various stages of therapy and of the treatment of several common issues that we all might have. One, starting session. 
Here are the questions I usually ask my patients at the beginning of each session. Therapist, how did it go? Did you notice any beliefs, intrusions, anger, or emotions in the last week that we should address today? Did you have any dreams or unusual experiences in the last few days? Did you notice any of these issues refer to the previous session notes that we treated in the last session? Are there any new issues you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about anything in particular? When they do want to talk, I suggest that we get the subconscious working before talking. Two, treating tagged parts. One intervention that I routinely do is ask the subconscious to tag any parts or painful memories that become active between sessions. In the next session, I systematically treat the tagged parts and memories. Here is an example of how I start treatment of tagged parts and memories at the beginning of a therapy session. Therapist, before we talk about your experiences since the last session, let's get your subconscious working on some issues. Subconscious, are there any parts or tagged parts and memories that want treatment? Tagging and treating tagged parts and memories are standard interventions. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat those parts slowly, safely, and with total respect. Now the patient and I talk. We review the problems we treated in the last session and identify issues to treat again record any strange experiences, and list new issues. Therapist, later, are you done treating the tagged parts? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please do a massive change history and everything. Subconscious, yes. I ask the subconscious to do a massive change history and everything after every intervention. Soon, the subconscious may learn to do it without your asking. Therapist, subconscious, are there any parts that don't want treatment? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, are there any more parts that don't want treatment? Just checking. Subconscious, yes. I am problem solving by resolving the reasons for not wanting treatment and repeat the last question until I get a no. Now I can start treating the list of identified issues. Phobias. Phobias are relatively easy to treat unless severe trauma causes the phobia. Parts or memory structures create phobic responses in the patient's experience. Sometimes beliefs contribute to phobias. Before treating the phobia, I ask the patient to visualize the situation to get some idea about how much pain the phobia causes. Sometimes I ask the patient to guess the intensity of the pain on a scale of zero, low, to 10, high. Here is how to treat a problematic phobia. Therapist, are you prepared to speak? Can you visualize talking to 100 people? Patient, yes. Therapist, do you feel the fear? Patient, yes. Therapist, focus on that fear. Subconscious, do you see the public speaking phobia? Subconscious, yes. Can you treat, therapist, can you treat the basis for the phobia? Subconscious, no. Therapist, do parts cause the phobia? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can you treat all the parts that cause the phobia one after the other in the correct order? Subconscious, yes. Usually, I ask if, if the patient can feel the emotion decreasing while thinking about the phobia. Sometimes the intensity of emotions stops decreasing, which means there is another intervention needed. Therapist, done. Are we finished with the phobia? Subconscious, 
No. Therapist, is there a structure of memories that helps cause this phobia that can be treated? I'm gonna do that again. Is there a structure of memories that helps cause this phobia that can be treated? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat the structure and when the structure falls apart, tag and treat each memory element of the structure in the correct order. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, done. Are you finished treating the phobia? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, are there any self-limiting beliefs associated with the phobias? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can you treat the self-limiting beliefs until they are false and compose and strengthen self-empowering beliefs? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, is there anything else to do with this phobia? Subconscious, no. The following is an example of a strategy using the treatment just completed on one issue to treat another issue. This strategy saves time. Therapist, can you use the phobia treatment with the height phobia? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please do it and indicate when you have finished or have a problem. Subconscious, yes. The treatment of simple phobias usually works and demonstrates the capacity of the subconscious to treat painful issues but with increased intensity of the trauma history causing the phobia, the complexity of the treatment increases. Phobias are not always easy to treat. Number four, emotions. All emotions can be approached directly with the hope they will be easy to treat. This patient had a problem with anger intruding into his relationship with his wife and causing disagreements on the job. In a previous session, we treated some anger parts and asked the subconscious to tag any problematic parts or memories between sessions that come into the active experience. Here is the way I dealt with some of the remaining anger. Therapist, subconscious, did you tag any parts that gave anger intrusions? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, do these parts all want treatment? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can you treat those parts one after the other and use their content and emotions to try and activate other parts that give anger? Subconscious, yes. The content and emotions ploy appears to speed up uncovering related parts. Therapist waits. Are you done? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, it is good to do a massive change history, a change history of the ego states and to treat shadow memories. Shadow memories are weak neural representations of a strong emotion that are learned simply by the activity of the strong emotion. Shadow memories can maintain an emotion or behavior even though the primary trauma memory has been treated. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, please do the massive change history and everything. Subconscious, yes. While the results of the initial treatment of an emotional issue is usually experienced immediately, Further treatment of other parts or memory structures that contribute to the issue is often necessary. Number five, panic attacks. As with many issues, panic attacks can be simple or complex. Some are easy to treat and some are more difficult depending on the origins. Parts or other memories with extreme anxiety are usually the cause of panic attacks. Even in more complex cases, I find that I can at least reduce the frequency of attacks, even after just one session. Panic attacks may continue for several weeks because other causes of panic 
remain dormant. Although panic attacks can be complex, in most cases in which I have been persistent, panic attacks no longer occur. Therapist, subconscious, do you see the cause of the panic attacks? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, are parts causing the panic attacks? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, please treat the parts that are causing the panic, panic attacks. Ask about other parts and treat the parts that don't want treatment with having problem solving strategies. When done, therapist, subconscious, is there a structure of memories associated with the panic attacks? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat the structure associated with panic attacks and tag all memory elements when the structure falls apart. Then treat the memory elements in the correct order. Subconscious, yes. When done, therapist, are we done treating panic attacks today? Subconscious, yes. I also inquire about beliefs. Do the change history interventions and treat the shadow memories. Although the panic attacks can be complex, in most cases, the panic attacks no longer occur. Number six, depression. Many issues can cause depression. Write down all the issues believed to be causing the depression. For example, grief, loss, childhood trauma, impairment due to an accident, parental mod models, failure, etc. Each issue may have to be treated separately. I always try to treat depression directly because after treatment, some of the causes don't need treatment or have been partially treated. Parts, memory, or system structures, beliefs, as with phobias, may cause depression. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can you see a structure associated with depression? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can you treat that structure? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat the structure and when it falls apart, tag and treat the memory elements in the correct order. Subconscious, no response. Therapist, is there a part that wants to be treated now? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, please treat the part. Subconscious, yes. When done, therapist. Subconscious, can you treat the structure now? Sub subconscious, yes. Wait. Therapist, subconscious, are you finished? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please do a massive change history and everything. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, are there beliefs that support depression? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat the beliefs supporting depression so they are false and compose and strengthen new self-empowering beliefs. Subconscious, yes. When done, therapist, have you finished treating the cause of depression? Subconscious, yes. Now I ask the person if the intensity of his or her depression has changed. When there is a lingering issue or some depression, I problem solve or troubleshoot and treat the issue causing the depression. It usually takes several sessions to treat an easy case of depression. Sometimes it takes a lot of problem solving and a number of sessions. Number seven, dreams. I assume dreams are caused by the intrusion of past experiences or of experience from a preceding day. I believe the content and emotions of the dreams are often independent and have to be treated separately. The dream is the personality's attempt to organize the disorganized information and emotions. I ask the subconscious to treat the content and emotions 
in the correct order. Therapist, subconscious, do you remember the scary dream about bullfrogs that she had last week? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, do we have to treat the content or emotions of the dream first or content? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat the content in the dream. Subconscious, yes. After a wait, therapist, are you done? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat the emotions in the dream. Subconscious, yes. After a wait, therapist, are you done? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, do we have to do a mass change history or any other intervention? Subconscious, no. Therapist, are we finished treating the bullfrog frog dream? Subconscious, yes. The treatment of simple dreams usually doesn't cause noticeable changes in experience. With a recurrent dream, there are probably parts or significant trauma memories causing the dream. Problem solving uncovers the source of the dream and after treatment, the recurrent dream in most cases never occurs again. Number eight, physical problems. A physical problem like muscle pain, headache, or any other pain can often be treated with process healing. It is important to see your family doctor to ascertain if there is any medical problem causing the pain. When pain or tension is learned in muscle memory, sometimes it becomes a chronic condition. The muscle memory can be treated with process healing to relax the muscle. This will reduce or eliminate the physical pain. Therapist, subconscious, do you see the cause of that physical pain? Subconscious. Yes. Therapist, subconscious, is muscle tension the cause of that physical pain? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat that muscle memory. Some problem solving may be needed to find the cause of the pain, but in many cases, this inf intervention is all you need to treat a physical problem. I have had patients with lifelong knots in their backs who are now free of pain after we treated the parts and memory structures. A little problem solving, in most cases, results in some relief or the elimination of the physical problem. Summary. I wrote the following chapters in a way that may be unusual, but will help you understand the use of process healing. What is unusual in the up upcoming chapters is that you will read a conversation between the therapist, you, and the patients, your subconscious. There are several objectives for doing this. First, I wrote the communication between the therapist and the subconscious in detail to show how process healing is done. Some of the description is repetitive, so as you learn, you will begin to expect what the therapist is going to say. This anticipation will suggest that you are learning this treatment approach and are becoming ready to do process healing in a way similar to the way I do it. By the time you finish this book, the interventions used in treatment and problem solving will easily occur to you. Second, I wrote the chapters in this way to give a feeling for the flexibility and creativity fostered by this procedure. I have included many examples of problem solving while treating many unusually complex issues. I hope my example of fumbling around while problem solving will help you be flexible and creative. Third, the repetitive the repetition will also give you a feeling for the chaos process in the brain without talking about chaos theory. This is important to help you learn how to problem solve when you find a complex process. Problem solving with this theory involves a conceptual shift 
see Appendix 4. The repetition will help you make the transition from your present view of behavior change to one involving the functions of the brain and memories. When you grasp the concepts of the theory, this knowledge will allow you to be intuitive with the theory to help you solve complex bar treatment barriers. Finally, this book is a self-treatment book. I wrote this book in a way that makes it easy for you to do process healing on yourself. You won't have to figure out how to do it. In a sense, it is a self-treatment in a script format. Just by reading chapter three, your subconscious will usually learn the treatment process. The remaining chapters will enrich your skills or give therapists tools for complex patients. I give the interventions in a linear style that will help you fine tune your own personality. Even if the method doesn't work for you, you can use it to work with other people. It is my belief that there is no danger in reading this book. If you have mental issues that could be disturbed by this text, your subconscious and other parts of your personality will probably prevent any adverse reactions. However, some people could be triggered by the content of this book. For people who know when they are being triggered and have tools and techniques to handle the emotional flooding, there is no danger. But for people who may be triggered and have no clue as to what is happening or why, there is a danger of being overwhelmed. If you find yourself overwhelmed, seek professional support from a therapist familiar with your dissociative processes who can help you on your healing journey. Chapter three gives all the information for teaching the process healing method to yourself and others. The strategy and intervention for clearing or treating barriers are listed. When you follow the directions, you will usually teach your subconscious the treatment method. Then you will have the opportunity to experiment with the treatment process. Chapter three. Teaching the Process Healing Method. Outline. The Process Healing Method is a change process. It is based on my clinical experience. In this chapter, I will teach you how to get started. The first steps involved establishing rapport and teaching you, and at the same time, your subconscious, how the personality develops. Then you are taught how to organize all aspects of your personality and get them to work together. I will give you detailed instructions on how to motivate aspects of your personality so they want to join with the main personality. Specifically, what to say to describe the advantages and to resolve any barriers an aspect may have to receiving treatment. When all aspects of you want treatment and give permission, you will read the metaphor teaching the treatment method to your subconscious. Then I will give you an overview of the treatment process and ways to resolve additional barriers to treatment. Much of this information will be taught by giving you a script of what to say. Though the information in this overview may seem repetitive, I want you to fully understand the 10-step procedure summarized in the flow diagram on page 49. This chapter is designed to teach you the process healing method by presenting you with the education process that gets every part of your personality on the internal treatment team. Sections three through two through Again, sections 3-2 through 3-8 describe the education process. Mainly, the education process is a sequence of interventions you and your subconscious are taught. You will learn a theory or an analogy explaining how your personality came to be the way it is. You learn the advantages for treatment 
and examples for resolving barriers to joining the treatment team and receiving treatment. The goal of the education process is to get all aspects to adopt common goals and join the treatment team. You will learn an ordinary hypnotic technique of using finger movement to signal yes or no and so forth. This gives you a means to communicate with the subconscious and aspects of your personality. Normally, the reader or patient will not go into hypnotic trance. The education process is completed when all active aspects of the personality have 100% agreement to complete the education process by giving permission for the subconscious to learn the treatment method. The two remaining sections, 3-9 and 3-10, teach the subconscious how to teach emotional issues and resolve barriers to treatment. The subconscious is also freed to give unconscious, independent, self-directed treatment to negative beliefs, memories, and experiences whenever they become active in your unconscious or conscious experience. The subconscious can also use other strategies for automatically treating several common issues. The flow diagram on page 49 summarizes the steps in the education process for getting all aspects to join the treatment team and teaching the subconscious how to treat trauma. The education process and the treatment process are separate treatment procedures. The numbered boxes identify the different tasks in the education process. Each number corresponds to a section of this chapter that describes the task in detail. Later chapters provide more advanced treatment interventions used in the treatment procedure. The following summary is a summary of the education process that corresponds to the 10 steps in the flow diagram. Each numbered step is summarized below. By reading the following steps, and referring to and reading the choices in the flow diagram, you will get a clearer picture of how the education process works. This will help you as you read the sections in the chapter and fit them into the organization described in the flow diagram. Here are, ten, here are summaries of the 10 sections. Number one. Introducing the process healing method. This section describes how to introduce process healing to the patient. Number two, the formation of the personality. This section describes how the personality forms. This information enables the patient and parts of the personality to feel comfortable with the treatment process because believable explanations are given for the role of memory, the subconscious, and the development of various parts of the personality. Number three, the advantages for treatment. There may be many aspects or parts of the personality invested in protecting the patient or themselves. This section gives all the advantage, advantages for treatment. However, the main reason for treatment is to get more happiness or satisfaction and less pain. Number four, introduction to the treatment team idea. The goal is to get all aspects of the personality to want treatment, to want to work together, to want good coping skills strengthened with positive emotions, and to want to join with the main personality. When all aspects are on the treatment team, treating the person becomes easier. Number five, removing barriers to wanting treatment. Often aspects have reasons for not wanting treatment, which therefore become barriers to treatment. This section identifies barriers and provides a way to resolve most reasons an aspect might have for not wanting treatment. The goal is to get each aspect to join the treatment team. Number six, learning to communicate with the subconscious. 
Up to this point, we have been talking through the conscious mind to active aspects in the unconscious. This section teaches you several ways to communicate directly with your aspects and the subconscious. Number seven, assessing the readiness to teach the treatment process. This section explains how to be sure all aspects are on the treatment team and want the subconscious to learn the treatment process. Number eight, teaching the treatment method. A final check is made to be sure that teaching the subconscious the treatment process will be respectful to all parts that are active. The subconscious learns the treatment process with a simple metaphor. This metaphor always works. Of course, other similar metaphors will also work. Number nine, resolving barriers to treatment. Sometimes there are aspects of the personality who do not want to become active or do not become active during the education process. When they become active later, they can become barriers to treatment. This section identifies and provides solutions for beliefs and other issues that are the reasons an aspect may have for not wanting treatment. Number 10, the first interventions. Once the subconscious knows the treatment technique, it can help create treatment plans for each member on the treatment team. The subconscious then learns some aids to improve the speed and quality of treatment and is guided to treat some problematic beliefs, memories, and habits that will free it to automatically treat issues in the unconscious as needed. It is important to know that when you read these sections as if you were the patient, you will also build rapport with all aspects of your personality. This will prepare your entire personality to be comfortable with treatment and the notion of the subconscious's learning how to treat negative memories without your help. To be respectful of all your aspects, it would be both instructive and helpful for you to follow all directions carefully. These 10 sections are presented in the order in which you should read and use them one section after the other. If you read them out of order, you will lose the structure of the chapter, and this will prevent you from experiencing the step-by-step -step procedure preparing all aspects to want treatment. Read the sections of this chapter one at a time, from one through 10. If you have to stop before you complete the 10 sections, Use a bookmark so you can quickly return to the last page you read. Flow design. Flow diagram of process healing. Because of the small type font, a PDF copy of this figure is available at www.neosolteric.com. As a side note, this website is no longer active. The reason process healing is so respectful is that the entire personality learns to want treatment in a way that gives respect to all aspects of your personality. Having all aspects on the internal treatment team reduces pro problems in the treatment process. This is accomplished by requiring all treatment team members to work in consensus to want treatment, to want their good coping skills strengthened with positive emotions and to want to join with the main personality. Eventually, after removing all barriers to joining the treatment team, all aspects will join the main personality and give you permission to teach the subconscious the treatment process. With permission, from all aspects, you will read a short metaphor that teaches your subconscious how to treat painful issues. Of course, you can jump ahead and read the treatment metaphor. 
However, if there are any aspects in your personality in your personality that are fragile or angry, then without the information you skipped, these aspects may become upset. An upset abs aspect can stop communication or the treatment process. Commit yourself to reading this chapter as it is written and postpone learning the treatment process until you have permission from all aspects on the treatment team. By simply following instructions, you will know when you have permission to teach the subconscious the treatment process. If you do jump ahead and find that the treatment process or communication with the subconscious does not work, don't worry. You can reread the sections you skipped, then problem solve to find and resolve any barriers. As you can see, skipping ahead upsets the logical order and can cause problems. The 10 sections in this chapter are referred to in the numbered boxes in the flow diagram. In each section corresponding to the numbered box are suggestions about what you can say to the patient. Samples of dialogue in the first eight sections gives examples of the steps in the education process. The last two sections of this chapter give detailed descriptions of the first interventions routinely carried out in the treatment process and of the means for dealing with barriers occasionally found in treatment. The dialogue between the therapist and the subconscious is printed in bold type. Recall the example at the end of chapter two that presents the education process and treatment interventions to the patient. When you read the example again, you will notice that I take many shortcuts in teaching the process healing method to my patients. After you complete this chapter and use it with other people, you will gradually adopt my suggestions into the presentation that is comfortable for you. 3-1, introduction, talking to the patient. This is therapy using an education process and a hypnotic technique. You do not have to go into trance. I encourage you not to go into trance because I want you to remember everything I do. Later, when you want to treat something, you can talk to your subconscious and then say what I said to make changes. Learning and doing process healing should present no danger to aspects of the personality since there are many safe ways to block the learning process or communication. I am sure that your aspects or the subconscious can manage to preserve a healthy experience and warn you in a safe, non-disruptive way if there is a danger. If you ever feel a strong negative emotion, then process healing may not be suitable, suitable for you without a supervising therapist. The next section gives additional precautions. As you read the following sections, you will establish rapport with all aspects of your personality by having a common understanding of how problems and painful issues are learned. This is a large step toward identifying and treating problems. You will read how painful emotions associated with memories cause problems. Old painful experiences and traumas, remembered or not, can continue to be problems in our here and now experience. The process healing method offers a model to explain how these problems form and distort our life experiences. The model offers a way to organize all aspects of your personality so that the aspects want to be treated, want to work together, want to have their positive behaviors strengthen, and want to join with the main personality. They will do this to get more satisfaction and have less pain. Most problems can be treated safely and respectfully. The power of this model is the discovery that the subconscious 
can learn how to change an emotional issue from having painful emotions to not having painful emotions. The subconscious then becomes a powerful asset to the therapist. Clinical experience shows the subconscious can perform treatment tasks safely and almost painlessly, even with intense trauma emotions. After reading this chapter and following the directions, most people will have the treatment process available to use. This chapter is all they need to resolve barriers to reach their personal goal, growth and remove self-limiting issues. All people have aspects in their personality. Pre-birth, birthing or later medical, emotional or physical traumas create amnesic or dissociative aspects of the personality. Steps in the education process teach the process healing method. The first step teaches the development of the personality so you will know how different parts of the brain and the personality work. Learning about the information of amnesic and dissociative parts is especially important. After describing the reason for treating painful memories, you will learn about the treatment team and the conditions for joining the treatment team. Then you will ask all your aspects to join the treatment team. Here's how it's done. You will be taught several ways to communicate with your subconscious and the aspects of your personality. You will simply ask questions and get responses from your aspects or the subconscious. The questions you ask will eventually get all aspects of your personality to join an internal treatment team and to support having the subconscious learn the treatment process. All the treatment team members will want treatment, will want to have their good coping skills strengthened with positive emotions, will want to join the main personality, and will want to work in consensus. The treatment team members have to agree unanimously to have the subconscious learn the treatment process. This means that all aspects will vote yes in some way to have their subconscious learn the process. Negotiating between the subconscious and the aspects continues until the team members have 100% agreement. Then you teach the treatment method to the subconscious. The next step is to get all members to vote on a treatment plan for each member of the treatment team. Treatment plans created this way means that all aspects can be safely treated and join the main personality. Before they join with the main personality, positive emotions are linked to the positive qualities and coping skills of the various aspects. As the team member joins the main personality, they all take part in running the body with no conflicts. Sometimes with some issues, various barriers interfere with treatment. Later sections in this chapter give treatment resolutions for the barriers. After resolving the barriers, the treatment intervention can continue. Together, you and your subconscious can learn to do all of this just by your careful reading of the interventions presented. In addition to these interventions, three other barriers are resolved that often prevent the subconscious from automatically and independently treating aspects, negative beliefs, memories, and experiences. Several suggestions are offered to increase the speed of the treatment process. 3-2, the formation of the personality. I want to teach you and your aspects how the personality came to be. Aspects are simply normal parts of your personality. I refer to aspects or parts when talking to you because I want to achieve rapport with you 
and your aspects. I get rapport by letting you know I am familiar with your world. However, most importantly, I want to show you that it is possible for you and your aspects to get more satisfaction and have less pain in life. Treatment can be painless because I can teach your subconscious how to treat trauma memories and how to do it in a safe and comfortable way. As you read this, I know that you, your subconscious, and many of your aspects are also reading. Subconscious. Looking at figure 3-1, we have conception, birth, and now on the timeline of life. A scale for hurt is on the vertical line. Hurt is any form of physical or emotional pain. Shortly after conception, the subconscious starts to form when words, phrases, and sentences are heard through the mother's stomach and remembered at some neural level. I'm gonna say that again. Shortly after conception, the subconscious starts to form when words, phrases, and sentences are heard through the mother's stomach and remembered at some neural level. At birth, but sometimes before birth, the words, phrases, and sentences are connected to objects and actions that are now seen, heard, and felt. This results in the formation of a working verbal system or language. This language process can communicate with us, and it is this language system that I call the subconscious with whom I communicate when I work with people. This language process, the subconscious, is like a personality part. However, it is located throughout the brain and does not generally behave in the conscious or unconscious experience. It can nevertheless nevertheless, help us like an inner observer and work in the conscious or unconscious to stimulate memories into activity, remove negative emotions from memories, and replace them with positive emotions or qualities. The formation of the personality. The main personality starts forming at birth or sometime before birth. See figure 3-2. All behavior of the main personality is remembered in memory three because the content of the behavior has common qualities that are in some way related to sensory experience, reward and punishment, and basic needs. Memories included in memory three depend on the presence of one or more of those common qualities or states of memories. Therefore, Memory three is called a state-dependent memory. This memory is called memory three because there are two other state-dependent memories formed before the age of four, which you will find described in chapter five. There are other mem memory structures in memory three, which we will learn about in chapter eight. Our main personality and its ego states are part of the state-dependent memory three. The main personality in memory three and the subconscious are different in two important ways. The first difference is that the subconscious does not experience sensations such as vis visual experience, taste, smells, sounds, or ouches. The subconscious experience it without actual sensory sensation, without the ouch. The main personality, on the other hand, experiences and remembers all the pain sensations experienced during trauma, such as the pain of verbal or physical abuse. For example, if you pinch yourself, your main personality feels the ouch. However, the subconscious only has or registers the neural activity leading to the experience of pain and the ouch. It's similar to when you turn on the water of your house. The water me meter registers what is happening, water is running. 
Though the water meter knows water's running, it does not experience the water being wet or squirting. The subconscious, like your water meter, registers the pain without feeling the sensation of the pain. Therefore, the subconscious experiences the memories of all your behavior and emotion, but at a different neurological level of involvement and without the experience of physical sensations. The subconscious is not state dependent and has access to all memories running all neural activity. The second difference is that the subconscious cannot be damaged or hurt because it does not experience painful sensations. Said another way, the main personality and the subconscious handle painful emotions and trauma differently. The main personality forms filters and barriers to change or hide painful emotions and trauma to make them more comfortable. Filters and barriers can hide large portions of painful experience or memories from the conscious experience. The absence of painful memories simplifies for the conscious mind the process of creating responses. On the other hand, the subconscious has no sensory experience in the form of pain and trauma and therefore does not have filters and barriers. Hence, it, it has the capacity to know without pain the details of all active memories in the conscious or unconscious experience, even the most painful memories. It also has the same capacity with all memory process running everything in the brain and body. It is important to know that active memories are the only memories that can be included in the creation of the next response. A dormant memory is not active and cannot be used. However, if a dormant memory relates in some way to the current active memory, sensation, or emotion, it becomes active and can be used in a response and accessed by the subconscious. When the subconscious accesses a memory, it has the capacity to know what caused the memory and to treat any emotion associated with it. However, do not expect the information from the subconscious to be easily obtained. Normally, you have to guess with the 20 question procedure to get explanations or information. Once you get the information, the subconscious can then be pr prompted to detect, review, and change memories in the main personality. Content and emotion memory. Before we go further, let me tell you more about memory. I make a distinction between content memory and emotion memory. See figure 3-3. The content memory consists of the movie and memories of other neural activity present when the memory was created. The descending list, the emotional memory are shown as the stars associated with the neural memories in the content memory. A trauma memory has content memory, such as the movie or sensory experience and other neural activity with which the emotion memories associate. This distinction between content memory and emotion memory becomes clear after treating a trauma memory because after treatment, the memory, the movie, remains unchanged and has no emotional pain associated with it. In other words, the trauma memory has both content and emotions, which are independent of each other. Sometimes after treatment, the content memory may become even more detailed than it was before treatment. This gives further evidence that the content and emotion memories are independent of each other. Treatment removes the emotion memories from the content memories of the trauma memory. 
Content memory includes the movie, see figure 3-3. The movie is a sequence of sensory experiences that occur during the trauma that can be replayed like a movie. Besides the movie, the content memory includes the memory of the activity of some unique massive neural pathways. These massive, massive neural pathways involve all areas of the brain that were active during trauma. Examples of some of these unique massive pathways are those associated with the heart, the lungs, the forebrain process, eye movements, and so forth. Some academics call these unique massive pathways meridians. Active memories cause other our behavior and experiences. They are collages of previously learned content and emotion memories. For example, when we create a new sentence, the sentence is a collage of memories of words, which are composed, edited, and then cause us to say, what's up doc? Each word in the sentence has a memory in a collage that runs all the neural activity needed to say the sentence out loud. These collages are assembled in the active experience from active conscious and unconscious memories. For example, when I want to bat a fly, memories are triggered and assembled in the active experience to create a, a collage to do what I intend to do, namely, bat a fly. The same is true of emotions. Collages of emotion memories are created in what I call the active experience of the emotion system. Similar to content memories, reusing previously created emotion memories as another time-saving adaptive adaptation of the brain. We remember our current emotions with a collage of emotion memories that we learned earlier in life. However, the reuse of emotion memory can be damaging to the person, though it can be seen as a process of self-preservation. Here is an example of how reusing emotions can be damaging. An emotion memory, like a near-death experience, can be elicited repeatedly for use in later experiences when emotions or content of the later experience are similarly, slightly similar to the emotions or content of the near-death experience. When this happens, the old emotion associated with the response to the current situation can distort the emotional intensity of the current situation and create a traumatic response out of a non-traumatic situation. We see this in post-traumatic stress disorder and hypersensitivity. Because our behavior is caused by collages of memories previously learned, there are usually not many new novel responses to create. For example, when we have to scratch an inch, we have a sequence of collages of previously learned muscle memories that run the muscles to scratch an itch. The memories are reused in a collage to cause the active behavior of scratching the itch on our arm. We don't have to create a new response to scratch the itch. Most of our behavior is caused by collages assembled from previously learned memories. Here is a way a trauma memory may form. If you walk around the corner and see a dead body, you will take a deep breath and your heart will start pounding. In addition, your forebrain gets very active, trying to deal with all the sensory experiences and the emotions. All of these and other mobilized brain activities will be included in the content of the memory of the trauma. Some of the events that are remembered in a severe trauma include bruising, organ activity, chemical effect, effects, and trance states. When you remember a trauma, 
some representation of all neural activity going on at the time will be active and possibly experienced. Emotion memories represented by the stars, see figure 3-3, are connected to major neural pathways that were active in the active experience during the trauma. When we recall a traumatic experience, we recall both the emotion and the content memory. We re-experience, in part, the emotions, pictures, and or sounds from the trauma. In addition, we experience some representation of all neural activity in the brain and body that was going on during the trauma. This activity could be increased breathing rate, a gasp, a change in heart rate, physical pain, sensations, or drug effects. All of this takes place in the active experience. Before I describe the active experience, let me review several features of your memory. Memories are either active or dormant. The active memories are awake and available in the active experience for creating our behavior. Dormant memories are inactive as though asleep, but nevertheless ready to be triggered in the active experience. Even when a memory is dormant, it is potentially active because it can be elicited or called into the active experience. Here is an example. I'm going to ask you a question, but you don't know the answer to the question. Pause here and think about the answer. If I ask when you last rode a bike, your response or memory of riding a bike becomes active in response to my question. You consciously experience the memory of riding a bike. If you had pain and a fast heart rate associated with that memory, you might experience pain and a fast heart rate after hearing the question. The active experience is a construct to give you a way to think about all the active memories and emotions that are available for creating our internal and external behavior. The active experience construct helps distinguish between dormant and active responses. The active experience. The active experience, see figure 3-4, next page, is a construct used to represent all neural activity that is available to create events in our conscious and unconscious experience. The neural activity includes active ongoing behavior, content and emotion memories, internal and external stimulation, background processes, and organ and brain functions. Everything else is dormant namely not active in the active experience. Suppose you learned as a child to slap a fly on your cheek. That memory is dormant until a fly lands on your cheek. Then it wakes up and becomes active, you slap your cheek. The basic neural structure shown in figure 3-4, next page, works on the neural activity in the active experience to create collages that cause our internal and external behavior. All active content and emotion memories and other neural activity in the active experience are related in some way. The basic neural structure uses some of these active memories to create collages. Collages of memory run our behavior in the same way that computer programs run computers. The neural activity triggered by the collage of memories that create activity in our body to make a response is similar to a computer program. The basic neural structure takes the most appropriate content memories in the active experience in the current emotional context to create a collage. The content memories and emotions in the collage create a response. In other words, any response and its memory are a collage of the most appropriate memories assembled 
from all of this information in the active experience. The most appropriate memories in an emotional situation are selected from the active memories in the active experience to get more satisfaction and less pain. The association process. The association process serves an important function. Active memories activate other memories that are similar in content or emotion. The association process prevents dormant memories that are similar but remotely re related from being activated. It effectively screens out similar memories that are unlikely to be, to be used in a collage. The association process is represented by the dark line surrounding the active experience. See figure 3-5. This process is gradually learned after birth and will only allow relevant information into the active experience that is related in some way to the stimulation and active memories. If it is too liberal and allows even slightly related memories into the active experience, we have loose associations. Loose association is a condition that allows content related in some way to be easily triggered into the active experience. Here is an example. A sight of a pencil could elicit the thought of a hot dog. On the other hand, concrete thinking is a problem where the association process is too restrictive and words are taken literally. For example, Suppose someone says, I'm going to fly down to the store. A person with concrete thinking or tight associations might ask, do you need a ride to the airport? Besides the association process, we have the dissociation process. The dissociation process. The dissociation process, see figure 3-6 helps us in an important way with the development of volitional behavior. The dissociation process developed naturally to remove active memories and emotions that were unnecessary in our conscious awareness to simplify conscious activity. The dissociation process, for instance, is at work when we take a walk. It has separated into the unconscious, all the sensations that are present in your body when you walk. There is no need for them to be conscious for you to walk. If they were conscious, all of the information would be overwhelming. The dissociation process also helps you read by dissociating traffic noise. It is involved with adapting to our circumstances by dissociating visual or auditory information or any other sensory experience or memory that is unnecessary in our conscious experience. This process helps a person to get more satisfaction and to avoid pain by keeping painful memories or emotions in the unconscious. The main personality is usually who we are, in the simplest sense, from before birth to the present. The main personality uses the association process. So there is a, I'm doing that again. The main personality uses the dissociation process. So there is an unconscious and unconscious experience. See figure 3-7. I always draw the subconscious in the space below the active experience, because it appears that the subconscious only accesses memories and emotions active in the active experience. Here is the way the association and dissociation process can affect the main personality. We can learn to consciously control the dissociation and association process. When someone has a terrible experience that is painful to remember, he or she can consciously use the dissociation and association process to hide the memory and not easily remember it.
We know people who can consciously stuff emotions down so they don't have to feel them. They are using the dissociation and association process. In addition, a person with trauma, with a trauma history, can learn to automatically hide or dissociate painful memories so when they become active, they do not become conscious. When painful experiences are dissociated, either as a learned process or deliberately, we call the unconscious memories repressed memories. Dissociated painful memories can return spontaneously with or without further experience and intrude into our thoughts and emotions. Sometimes treatment techniques or the experiencing of a similar trauma can result in the return of conscious experience of previously dissociated memories. When one removes the dissociated process, main personality can again experience the dissociated or repressed content and emotions. Remember that the parts or aspects caused by the, the dissociative process are different from amnesic parts. Severe trauma and an absence of previous experience cause amnesic parts. The association and dissociation process are also active in denial. Amnesic parts and memories. Now, let us look at how amnesic memories or parts are formed. When we look at the time duration of trauma, see figure 3-8, we know that trauma with moderate pain can start and then continue for some duration until it ends. We can remember moderate trauma easily and can tell somebody about the traumatic, traumatic experience. But when trauma is new and has never been experienced before, namely when there is no memory to manage the situation and the trauma either evokes extreme emotions or is experienced as life-threatening, for example, a near drowning experience, the brain mobilizes. This means that the intense emotions mobilize memories that operate independently of the main personality to create responses to survive. Because the main personality is not generating behavior, it is rapidly pushed out of the active experience to become inactive or dormant. At this point, a trauma part forms. The executive function associates with the new trauma structure and participates in organizing the memories triggered by the intense emotions to create survival behavior. The memory of the trauma part includes all thoughts and behavior from the start of the trauma to some point near the end of the trauma. The amnesic or trauma part forms while the main personality is out of the active experience. When the intensity of the trauma winds down at some point, the main personality rushes back into the active experience and pushes the trauma part out of the active experience. Most of the behavior of the amnesic part is assembled from all the same behaviors available to the main personality at the time of the trauma. I will explain this in detail. Let us look at the process from the point of view of the active experience. We have the active experience at before the trauma, see figure 3-9. The line at trauma starts is the beginning of the traumatic experience. When the trauma begins, the novel, intense, intensely painful sensory experience and the absence of relevant memory in memory three triggers a massive response of adaptive behavior. One, this massive response is independent of the main personality when basic neural structure creates behavior in a survival emergency. Because of this intense behavior in the active experience, 
the main personality is rapidly pushed out of the active experience to a dormant state. Two, the main personality is shown outside, beneath the active experience. During the trauma, from the start of the trauma at st trauma starts to the end of the trauma at trauma starts, behavior is managed by the executive function and is remembered. A new memory structure is formed at the start of the trauma when the brain mobilizes and becomes an amnesic trauma part. Amnesic parts includes the executive function and any of the behavior usually seen in the main personality. The memories reflect the age of the person. At the end of the trauma, when the pain has decreased in intensity, number three, the main personality rushes back into the active experience and the trauma part is pushed out to be dormant in memory. Number four, it is interesting that unless trauma parts become active in the active experience, dormant trauma parts do not change. The trauma part is an amnesic part. The amnesic part is created when the main personality rapidly moves out of the active experience and rapidly returns to the active experience. This causes amnesia between the main personality and the trauma part because when it is created, few or no neural connections are made between the main personality and the trauma part. This is how amnesic memories and parts are formed. Figure 310 shows how an amnesic part is represented in the main personality. When the personality tries to remember the trauma, it cannot access or remember the trauma experience because of the amnesia. For example, the absence of neural connections. The absence of neural connections to the trauma part is the reason it is more difficult to discover and treat amnesic parts as opposed to dissociative parts. With dissociative parts, a dissociative process alters the neural response so it will not be conscious to the main personality. Now, amnesic parts are normal and present in most people. Amnesic parts can be created during birth, before birth, or later. For example, severe colic, a severe earache as an infant, abuse, automobile or industrial accidents, and so forth can create amnesic parts. The result is that many people who have these parts do not recognize the muscle movements or visual or auditory intrusions as behavior caused by parts. Other people might have co-conscious parts or parts that run the body. It can get complex, see Appendix 2. There are other ways amnesic parts can be formed. Often, amnesic parts are formed before birth, resulting in pre-birth parts. Pre-birth parts can be formed in utero or by a medical crisis in the mother, an accident, physical abuse, rape, a loud noise, high blood alcohol, and so forth. See figure 3-11. There can be one, more than one pre-birth part. It is interesting that pre-birth parts usually work to communicate information between the subconscious and the main personality. Because pre-birth trauma causes the pre-birth part, the information given to the main personality can be inaccurate because of distortions caused by filters or inaccurate memories created during a trauma. This may result in distorted insights or premises about reality that lead to a mental disorder or personality issue. When a life-threatening event occurs in, our, in the first four years of life, damage is specialized region 
damage to specialized, specialized regions of the brain have been shown to stop, retard, or alter emotional development. Such early trauma causes the brain to become more sensitive and responsive to fear and pain. The result is that the brain will more easily respond to trauma and mobilize to create amnesic parts. When this happens, the intensity of pain required to mobilize the brain is less than normal. This means a survivor who has had some early life trauma experiences that created amnesic parts will more likely have many amnesic parts. New amnesic parts can be created even when the traumas are less intense than the original trauma. See figure 3-12. This lowered threshold, which allows for easy creation of amnesic parts, is found in schizophrenia and other severe mental disorders. Treatment. I am going to tell you how the treatment process works. Normally, memory change involves creating a new structure and a collage of memories associated with that structure. What is different in treatment as opposed to everyday life is that treatment usually takes place in a quiet situation where there is no extra stimulation. See figure 3-13, next page. When you think of an issue, it comes into or is created in the active experience. The trauma issue is a collage of memories with a unique neural structure. Three crossed lines represent the neural structure. The subconscious orchestrates the treatment process. The treatment process involves stimulation by the subconscious which causes the basic neural structure to create a new collage. However, in the treatment setting, since there is little activity in the active experience, the structure of the collage and its content, namely the content and emotion memories, remain the same. Treatment occurs when both the collage becomes active and a memory process takes place. I call this memory process a memory event. A memory event is some neural activity that results in a new collage of memories. In treatment, the memory event works on the emotions of the trauma memory. With treatment stimulation, the collage representing the trauma issue is created, changed, and remembered. Because of the lack of activity in the active experience, the structure and the content of the collage do not change, but the emotions in the collage do. The change is that the patient's present neural or positive emotion memory replaces some of the trauma memory associated with the collage. The memory event causes the changed collage to be remembered. After a memory event, when the patient thinks about the same issue, the trauma memory is immediately recreated in the active experience. The memory now has less pain associated with the issue. Continued treatment of the same structure by the subconscious causes a sequence of memory events and changing collages. This treatment gradually reduces the pain until there is no pain associated with the memory of the issue. During this process, you or the patient will feel the pain of the issue gradually dimin diminish to zero or to a suitable intensity of emotion. A later section describes the strategy for treating intense trauma. The treatment setting refers not only to the external setting, but also to the internal setting. The interaction between you, your environment, including the therapist if present, and your internal process, such as self-talk, is part of the activity in the active experience. 
The optimal treatment setting is where there is, there is not much stimulation externally or internally to create unnecessary activity in the active experience. Process healing works best when there are few memories active in the active experience. Communicating about other topics or doing something during active process healing does not usually disrupt this treatment. When some internal or external stimulation triggers additional activity into the active experience, the additional activity disorganizes the active experience. This, disorganization, this disorganization is like a texture or ripple that affects the entire active experience. See figure 3-14. The dissociation or more complex activity causes the creation of a new memory structure or a change in the structure of the trauma issuing, issue being treated. The new memory structure is created to take into account all the active, active memories in the active experience. With a memory event, the newly created memory structure in the disorganized active experience is different from the original memory structure of the trauma issue. Because of this, the emotion memories associated with the structures of the trauma issue are not replaced. The disorganization of the active experience due to disruptions in either the ex external or internal treatment setting can be a barrier to successful treatment. In treatment, we want the structure of the trauma issue to remain unchanged. However, Disorganization constantly changes the structure of the trauma issue and creates new, unique structure and collages. These new structures are not lasting memories because the structures are changing. A single memory event with a new, unique structure is not enough to cause lasting memories. Remember, the patient is still thinking about the trauma issue. However, after a memory event in the presence of disorganization, the patient, when the patient recalls the trauma issue into the active experience again, he or she does not feel any change in the painful memory. The memory event did not operate on the structure of the trauma memory. The treatment process is not working. You will feel the emotion remain constant. By removing the memories in the active experience causing the barrier to treatment, the cause of the disorganization, the treatment process will work again. Integration or joining of parts. The reason for treating the pain of a part is to get the part ready without pain to join with the main personality. See figure 3-15. This joining process is called integration. The following metaphor describes joining or integrating a part with the main personality. The trauma part and main personality get closer together and the trauma part and main personality share their entire histories with each other until each has the same history. Then the main personality knows everything the trauma part knows and the trauma part knows everything the main personality knows. The major benefit of this joining of memories is that because memories create behavior and filters for experience, both parts can now run the body at the same time without conflicts. Also, all the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding memories of the trauma part after joining with the main personality are available to contribute to behavior in appropriate situations. All trauma parts have helpful protection information and coping behavior. These positive qualities of the parts are not strengthened with positive emotions 
the information or skill may be lost. Therefore, before the integration process, the subconscious is asked to associate positive emotions with any positive coping behaviors or information in the part formerly motivated by negative emotions. By doing this, the positive coping behavior and protective information will be more noticeable in the behavior created by the main personality. When all parts and aspects have joined with the main personality, all the integrated experiences from the entire personality are used correctly and appropriately when creating behavior. Sometimes parts worry that they will lose their identity when they integrate. See figure 3-16. This does not happen. At the beginning of trauma that created an amnesic part, the brain mobilized and created a new unique memory structure. This new memory structure is different from all other trauma parts or previous memory structures and the main personality. With integration, the trauma part and the main personality exchange memories until they both have the same memory associations. All integrated parts have the same memory associations. However, the memory structures of the integrated parts do not change, but remain unique. It is important to mention that integration does not always last. If a person experiences another trauma and there are enough similarities to the original trauma of some sort, that part could separate from the main personality and become active and problematic again. However, all parts integrated usually remain integrated. They will all experience both satisfaction and pain and will want to contribute to getting more satisfaction and having less pain. Summary, moving from trauma to treatment. The main personality has memories from conception to the present time. See figure 3-17. During your lifetime, there can be traumas in utero, at birth, during pre-verbal period, and later throughout adulthood. When the trauma is severe, amnesic, or dissociative parts can be created. The treatment process results in removing the pain from trauma memories and trauma parts. After treatment, positive emotions are associated to good coping behaviors and protective information to make these skills more available for creating behavior. After joining a part with the main personality, the positive emotions will motivate the good behaviors to be active as necessary in the creation of behavior. If you feel that you do not fully understand the information in this section, either read this section again or trust that your subconscious and all of your aspects have understood it. The process healing method has been presented in a similar way to people of all ages. I assume the subconscious and most of your parts have some understanding of this section. Now we are moving on to explain the advantages of treating and integrating all aspects of the personality. 3-3, the advantages of treatment. Now, I do not know if you have dissociated or amnesic parts, intense traumatic memories, ego states, or any other complex structures. However, I will talk to you as though you do have parts to ensure I give respect to your entire personality. I call these memories aspects or parts and use the words parts and aspects interchangeably. There are advantages to getting treatment, and I'm going to tell you and your aspects about these advantages. 
I am doing this so you can decide if you want to join what I call the treatment team and eventually be treated. If you feel like joining the treatment team right now, please form a treatment team and join it. There are six reasons for getting treatment and joining the main personality. Number one, to get more satisfaction and less pain. The most important reason for treatment is that all aspects of your personality can get more satisfaction and experience less pain. I know that most of your aspects want more satisfaction and less pain. Those who want more pain and less satisfaction will be worked with later. Number two, the top intrusions. Number two, to stop intrusions. <laughs> Some parts think that they have to give you pain, pictures, or verbal comments to protect you. See figure 3-18. This is not true. These intrusions caused by pain from the past can reduce or eliminate happiness and satisfaction and get in the way of or distort life in the present. Suppose you are applying for a job and the interviewer was a person who looked like someone who hurt you in the past. The anger that you might feel, an intrusion by that part, would affect you and interfere with a good job interview. Parts are important because their knowledge, wisdom, and understanding can be used to create decisions and behaviors. Experiencing the old pain and beliefs associated with the part will only distort and interfere with life in the present. By treating the pain and joining that part with the main personality, the main personality will have the part's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to help you. By joining the treatment team, parts take a large step toward getting more satisfaction and having less pain in life. Number three, to stop losing time. Having unremembered time or blank spots in your memory during the day makes life feel awkward and less satisfying. If you can think about lunch and can't remember anything between say noon and 1 p.m., when you thought you had lunch, then another part may be, have been running your body during that time. These parts will want to join with the main personality because parts that like to run the body will have the opportunity to run it from morning to night after joining. Joining with the main personality will allow them and all other parts to experience more satisfaction and less pain. When the join or integrated parts and main personality all have the same memory, they run the body at the same time without conflicts. Number four, to keep the main personality from distorting or dissociating important information. The main personality likes to get satisfaction in the form of closeness and affection. When the content associated with old memories elicits or triggers parts that intrude with strong negative emotions, the emotions will interfere with getting the satisfaction. Sometimes the main personality will learn to dissociate important information to stop the intrusions. This dissociation distorts reality and the main personality makes a bad decision. A woman who marries an alcoholic might sometimes say, I didn't even see that he was an alcoholic before our marriage. What happened was the main personality dissociated the awareness that he drank a six pack of, of beer on both Saturday and Sunday. She blindly entered into another marriage because of good feelings and a distorted reality. She discovered later that he was an alcoholic. The full integration of all parts will help to prevent this problem from happening. Number five, so that all parts can run the body all the time. 
Integration and or joining parts is the goal. When the integration process is complete, the memories of all parts are available for use in responding to all fitting situations. With integration, all parts run the body with no conflicts. Integration also gives more wisdom to the main personality, which will, which will result in all parts getting more satisfaction and having less pain. Number six, because a mono personality works best. Research by Colin Ross, MD, Ross, 1996, has shown that when patients who start with many parts get treatment in all parts integrate with the main personality, they behave normally in life. On a major test of mental disorder, Ross found that patients with integrated personalities showed a better mental health than the average US citizen. Therefore, in order to move toward health, it is good to integrate all aspects of your personality with the main personality. Now that you understand the benefits of treatment, let's talk about the treatment team. 3-4, introduction to the treatment team idea. It is important that, and I want all aspects of the personality to pay careful attention. If the idea of a treatment team does not feel comfortable to you, you can substitute playmates, the crew, or team, inner helpers, or whatever name you choose in place of treatment team. Any name will work just as well. This is where the respectfulness of process healing is most obvious. Before the parts join the treatment team, see figure 3-19, the parts agree to common goals. Parts on the treatment team want their trauma pain treated, want to have their good coping skills strengthened with positive emotions, want to join the main personality, and want to work in consensus to develop a treatment plan for each part. I want to make it clear that the subconscious will not learn the treatment process until all parts join the treatment team and are in full agreement. All parts, even the most frail baby parts, must feel safe after joining the treatment team and agree to having the subconscious learn the treatment process. The internal treatment team serves as a way to keep all parts safe by having all members involved in creating treatment plans. The treatment team also helps to organize all aspects of the personality to want to get treatment and integrate with the main personality. It is always necessary to discuss and resolve the barriers to wanting treatment in order to get all parts to join the treatment team. Fear about the danger of treating extreme pain and all other barriers to treatment are explained in the next section. After reading the next section, you and your subconscious will work together. By asking direct questions, you can uncover and clear barriers stopping parts from joining the treatment team. You will use the resolutions for barriers described below to get all the parts on the treatment team. When all parts are on the treatment team and want the subconscious to learn the treatment process, the subconscious learns how to treat with a simple metaphor. In this case, you will read a paragraph that teaches the treatment process. There are two tasks for the treatment team. The first is to give permission for the subconscious to learn the treatment process. The second is to work cooperatively to arrive at a safe treatment plan for each treatment team member. They vote according to the consensus rules. This means the treatment team and the subconscious discuss each treatment plan and negotiate to get 100% agreement. All aspects are equal and are, 
and receive treatment respectfully, even the weak little baby parts. Note that it is disrespectful to read the metaphor which teaches the treatment process before all aspects of the members of the treatment team and want the subconscious to learn the treatment process. This is up to you. If you want to give respect to all aspects of your personality, avoid reading the section that teaches the treatment process until all of your aspects agree. When I teach process healing in a classroom, just reciting the treatment metaphor teaches the treatment process to the students. Before you continue, I want you to identify an issue, a simple phobia or some mildly painful issue. This issue will be the practice issue the subconscious will use later to practice diagnosing and treating painful emotions. Let me give you a way to judge the intensity of the emotions. You will estimate or guess a score on a scale to remind you how intense the emotions or pain of the issue is before you start the treatment process. The scale will range from zero to 10. Looking at a kitchen cupboard gives you an emotional response that you can score at zero. A life-threatening experience causing extreme emotion is scored at a 10. Therefore, we have a scale where zero is no pain and 10 is intense pain. Find a phobia or other issue for which you estimate the score to be between six and eight on this scale of zero to 10. Now, pick a phobia such as heights, spiders, snakes, or public speaking that give you anxiety or fear that scores between six and eight. Do not pick an issue linked to a huge trauma. You can pick a painful memory, not one that is severely traumatic, but one that has emotions with a score of six to eight. Write down the name of the practice issue as I, as I will ask you to think of it later. Summary. You have learned about the treatment team and later you will work with your aspects and get them to join the treatment team. Treatment team members are willing to be treated, want to strengthen the good coping skills with positive emotions, want to join the main personality, and are willing to work in consensus to get safe treatment plans for each other's trauma. After the treatment team is formed and all members give permission to teach the subconscious the treatment process, the subconscious learns the treatment process by hearing or reading the simple metaphor. Then the subconscious treats the practice issue. Before treating any aspects, you will ask the treatment team and the subconscious to develop a safe treatment plan for each aspect of the treatment team. Then the subconscious can systematically treat, strengthen positive coping behaviors, and integrate all the parts with the main personality. At this time, the reader should be sensitive to emotions, anxieties, fears, or other intrusions which I would inter interpret as some part with intense emotion, having difficulty. For this reason, if you have a strong emotional experience as you read, or when you think of continuing, I recommend that you stop reading and find a competent therapist. The next section will educate you and the subconscious about how to remove barriers to wanting treatment. The subconscious and treatment team members can spontaneously use this information to convince uninformed parts why treatment is desirable. All parts that are willing to join the treatment team can join it now. So continue to the next section. 3-5, removing barriers to wanting treatment, problem solving. 
Introduction. I want to remind you that I use words, parts, and aspects interchangeably, although there is a difference. Parts are either dissociative parts or amnesic parts. Aspects include parts, beliefs, intense memories, or other memory structures that can cause barriers to treatment. You should know that every aspect is whole and healthy, but can also cause a problem. While frightening and unhealthy situations create aspects that cause problems, they simply learn the survival behaviors necessary to respond to the situation. You may or may not have a problematic aspect. So I take the safe route and write as though you do. I want to be respectful to you and your aspects. Most of the time, it is parts that present barriers. So you will often be communicating with parts. I'm going to ad address the barriers to treatment by giving the intervention for each barrier. Barriers have to be resolved in the process of convincing all parts to want treatment and to join the treatment team. At this point, you don't have a way to communicate with your parts. You will learn how to communicate with parts in this next section. However, as you read this, you will know that your parts and aspects, if there are any, are listening attentively. They will all reflect on the following information as you read it. After having all the information, it will be clear to them that joining the treatment team will result in getting more satisfaction and having less pain. Parts can have good reasons why they don't want to, they don't want treatment or don't want to join the treatment team. The goal of this section is to resolve all the reasons that prevent parts from wanting treatment and to join the treatment team. When all parts are on the treatment team, they can be systematically treated with relative ease. The following are all the reasons for not being treated. An explanation is given for each barrier that usually works to convince parts that a particular barrier is not useful to them and to have them want to join the treatment team. Some parts have several reasons or barriers to not wanting treatment or joining the treatment team. You or the subconscious will have to work with them and convince the parts that it is positive and desirable to be treated. Most people without a trauma history will not have to deal with any of these issues. However, it is important to review the reasons for treatment just to ensure that all aspects of your personality receive due respect. Note, the first letter in each line indica indicates the response of the therapist, the subconscious, or the part. From this point forward, bold print in identifies responses of the therapist, the subconscious, and the part. Therapist or you would be therapist. Subconscious, are you there? The subconscious would answer subconscious. Yo, index finger moved. Part or P, responsive of a patient or part. How to problem solve. Problem solving starts after you learn how to communicate with the subconscious and parts. However, I am giving a sample of the problem solving strategy here in order to prepare you to better understand to better understand the use of the problem solving material in this section when trying to get the parts of the treatment team and communicate with the subconscious you can run into barriers you discover barriers when you get no response a defiant response or an inconsistent response Problem solving can be challenging, but, is, but it is always interesting. Here is the routine first question of problem solving 
when I think a barrier is present, I immediately ask, therapist, subconscious, is there a part blocking communication? Subconscious, no. I wonder if I am being misled. I ask any one of the following questions. Therapist, subconscious, are you busy treating? Or does this part want treatment right now? With no response, I continue with the next question. Does the part that is blocking communication want more satisfaction and less pain? Part, yes. Therapist, do you want to join the treatment team? Part, yes. Therapist, thank you, please do. With a no response to save time, you ask the part unwilling to join the treatment team the following question. When you say the following, give emphasis to the word, words informed decision to encourage the part to talk to the subconscious. Therapist, would you be willing to talk to the subconscious to get all the information you need so you can make an informed decision about whether or not to be treated? When this doesn't work, try the following. Will you talk to the subconscious or a spokesperson for the treatment team to learn why it is good to join the treatment team and how safe treatment is? You can also ask the problematic part to talk to both the subconscious and the spokesperson for the treatment team together to give the information necessary to make an informed decision about joining the treatment team. Sometimes one has to be creative. When you continue to get no responses, you use the list of barriers given below. Inquire about all the barriers to treatment in order in which they are listed in this section. Ask the part about each barrier, one after the other, until you discover and clear the barrier and get the aspect to join the treatment team. When the response is, I don't want to tell you or no response, you can emphatically thank the part for communicating and continue to look for the important barriers. Any response by the part weakens the unwillingness to communicate. For people who have been taught to keep the family secret and not communicate, the complement for communication causes confusion and gradually breaks down the motivation for not communicating. Sometimes you have to go through this section several times. Though uncommon with uncomplicated personalities, some barriers refuse to talk to the subconscious or treatment team. Then you will have to tell the parts again what the treatment team does restate the advantages of treatment, or start the whole education process again. If you have many aspects, you may have to repeat the procedure for clearing barriers many times. For all the barriers in this section, when you get a no response, continue asking the questions suggested in the list provided until you strike on the issue that is important to the part. I usually assume I am talking to many parts and reflect this in the words I use. Then, if I'm talking to many parts, they all have the opportunity to decide to join the treatment team. Continue resolving barriers until the parts or parts join the treatment team. Occasionally, after joining a part to the treatment team, you can ask, subconscious, are all the parts on the treatment team. In practice, with a yes, you can continue to the next section. With a no, you can continue problem solving. The following are interventions for barriers that stop parts from joining the treatment team. I listed the barriers in order from most frequently used interventions to the least frequently used intervention. One, part just awakened. 
Therapist, did a part just wake up? Part, yes. Therapist, would you be willing to talk to, talk to a member of the treatment team or the subconscious to find out about the advantages of joining the treatment team? Part, yes. Therapist, great. Will you do that now? If the part won't talk with the subconscious or a member of the treatment team, then ask, would you want me to explain the advantages of treatment and joining the treatment team? If you get a no response, try the big incentive for more satisfaction and less pain. Therapist, do you want more satisfaction and less pain? Part, no, or no answer. Therapist, do you want more pain and less satisfaction? Continue to problem solve. Two, the pain is too great to be treated safely. Therapist, are you worried the pain is too great to be safely treated? I usually shorten this to, are you worried about big, big pain? Part, yes. Therapist, here is the way to treat the pain painlessly and safely. See figure 3-20. I draw figure 3-20 as I explain this. The subconscious orchestrates the treatment and the trauma parts follows the directions of the subconscious. The subconscious treats a little part of the trauma pain at a time so the pain is controlled carefully. If the main personality can just barely feel 100 units of pain, then it will be painless to treat five or fewer units of trauma at a time. If a part worries about an intensity of the pain, the amount of pain treated can adjust from five to three or one or 0.5 or fewer units of pain. This will prevent emotional flooding of the trauma part or triggering and flooding of a part or another part in memory. Since activating five units of pain destabilizes the trauma part, consecutive treatments with no pause could increasingly destabilize the part and result in flooding, the active experience with emotions. To prevent this problem, after each treatment, allow the trauma part to re-stabilize, that is to rest until it's calm. This treat, rest, treat, rest pattern effectively ensures the trauma part will not destabilize and flood the active experience. It's like waiting for a bowl of gelatin to stop jiggling after knocking the bowl. By treating the small increments of pain repeatedly, the entire duration of the trauma is slowly treated. Both the rate of treatment and the duration of the rest period are what the treatment team negotiates to arrive at safe treatment plans. Are you willing to be treated now? Part, yes. Therapist, will you join the treatment team? Part, yes. With a no, Look for another barrier by problem solving. Problem solving means that you systematically try all barriers in the list of barriers offered in this chapter. Chapter six gives other strategies for resolving barriers to treatment. Usually you find a part that is fragile and is afraid that any treatment will cause he or she to flood the active experience. Here is how I handle fragile parts. Figure 3-21 shows what I draw as I explain the treatment procedure. Therapist, subconscious, is this part fragile and afraid of treatment because he or she fears flooding the conscious experience? S, yes. Therapist, subconscious, yes. Therapist, here is the way the subconscious can treat fragile parts to make the treatment safe. See figure 3-21. The subconscious arranges 
the four parts to crowd together somewhere in the brain to make a quiet space. See figure 3-21a. The treatment takes place here because the quiet space protects the treatment from any stimulation by actively by activity in the active experience. This makes it unlikely that random events will cause the part to flood. Now, because extreme pain created you, it is probable that the trauma also damaged the association and dissociation process, and that these processes have been working hard to keep you from flooding. By treating the trauma in the association and dissociation process, you and your you and your own trauma at the same time. I'm going to read that again. By treating the trauma in the association and dissociation process and your own trauma at the same time. See figure 3-21b. The subconscious can carefully control the rate of treatment. This further reduces the chance of flooding. As a further precaution to protect you from falling apart, you can wear a wetsuit, a tuxedo, leotards, wrap yourself in white light, or be accompanied by angels. See figure 3-21c. In addition, by backing into the treatment process, you will reduce your anticipatory anxiety by not watching the treatment process. See figure 31, 3-21C. See figure 3-21D. If you still have worries about flooding or feel unsafe, you can hold the hand of the creator, the true Jesus, or any comforting person. See figure 3-21E. Are you willing to get treatment now and join the main personality? Subconscious, yes. Usually a fragile part is willing to be treated by using these added precautions. Number three, the treated and integrated memory will re-traumatize the main personality. Therapist, are you afraid that your trauma memory will tra re-traumatize the main personality? Part, yes. Therapist, I can fully understand your concern. It is possible to treat your pain and have the subconscious work with you, the amnesic or dissociative part. To make sure that all the traumatic memories are dissociated. Then, after treatment, your memories remain in the unconscious of the main personality. In this way, you can be treated without worrying that your memories will re traumatize the main personality. Are you willing to join the treatment team? Part yes. Number four doesn't want to join the treatment team. Therapist, are you willing to join the treatment team? Part, yes. Can you do it now? Part, yes. Therapist, thank you. If the answer is no, or there is no response, ask. Therapist, do you want more satisfaction and less pain? Part, yes. Therapist, Will you join the treatment team? Usually I get a yes response. Part, no. Therapist, is there an issue preventing you from wanting to join the main personality? Part, yes. Remember to give stress to the informed of informed decision. Therapist, would you be willing to talk to the subconscious to get all the information you need to make an informed decision about joining the treatment team? Continue problem solving. Number five, the part likes to run the body. Therapist, are you afraid that you will not be able to run the body anymore? Part, yes. Therapist, some parts like to run the body because it's fun, but this is another form of intrusion. Running the body with the main personality active 
can give the main personality embarrassing experiences that interfere with getting satisfaction. If you run the body by pushing the main personality into dormancy, you give the main personality blank spots in memory because he or she is dormant. This upsets the main personality when he or she doesn't remember everything he or she has done. In addition, some parts behave differently from the main personality. An angry part taking an interview would not get the job. Again, having parts run the body reduces the chance of getting more satisfaction and having less pain. When a part integrates, all the part's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding joins with the main personality and adds new information or strengthens old information. The part's information is used in the here and now whenever the part's memory is suitable for the current situation. The subconscious strengthens all positive qualities of the part before joining the part with the main personality. After the integration, the part will be able to experience running the body with no conflict and take part in getting more satisfaction and protecting the body from receiving pain. Are you willing to join the treatment team? Part, yes. Number six, fear of dying. Therapist, are you afraid that if you are treated, you will die? Part, yes. Therapist, no parts, die. After treating your pain, you can join the main personality to get more satisfaction and less pain. All your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding become part of the main personality and are used in here and now as may be appropriate. Will you join the treatment team? Part, yes. Number seven, fear of losing your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Therapist, are you afraid that you will lose all your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding after you join with the main personality? Part, yes. Therapist, this is not true. You simply lose the pain. All your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding will be available in the main personality. All the positive beliefs and behaviors remain strong because the subconscious will strengthen them with positive emotions before you join the main personality. If you like the dance, after integrating, the main personality will be more likely to go dancing. Any nasty protective behaviors are still available, but only when the current emotion and situations are fitting for them. Are you willing to join the treatment team? Part, yes. Number eight, pre-birth part interfering with communication. When attempting to communicate with the subconscious, you will occasionally see inconsistent responses. When I ask a question that should be yes or no, and I get an I don't know, I always suspect a pre-birth part. Pre-birth parts like to answer for the subconscious, but often don't know the correct answer. Here is how I handle this situation. Therapist, is this a pre-birth part? Part, no. Therapist, is this part willing to sleep and put his, his or her eyes and ears in the active experience, simply listen and not respond for the subconscious? Part, yes. If I get a no here, I problem solve. When you get a yes and you find a pre-birth part, treat the pre-birth part. Therapist, well, pre-birth part, I know that sometimes one or more pre-birth parts serve to relay information from the subconscious to the conscious experience. Pre-birth parts may still be trying to do that job, which complement, complicates communication with the subconscious. Therapist, are you willing to join the treatment team right now and later join with the main personality? Part, no. Therapist, would you be willing to go to sleep and watch with your eyes and ears? 
part. Yes. Watch for inconsistencies as you communicate with the subconscious. Again, if this doesn't work, try problem solving. Number nine, parts want more pain and less satisfaction. Therapist, do you want more pain and less satisfaction? Part, yes. Therapist, was your trauma continuous so you had to choose to have pain to make the pain feel less painful? Part, yes. Therapist, well, the pain you continue to avoid is old pain that you learned many years ago. If you let the subconscious treat the early pain, then you could choose to have more satisfaction and less pain. If the subconscious treats that pain in a way that doesn't hurt you or the main personality or any other aspects of the personality, would you be willing to join the treatment team? Part, yes continue with the education process, or part, no. Therapist, you know that you can control the rate of treatment and the duration of rest between treatments to make the treatment process very safe. Would you like to have more satisfaction and less pain and join the treatment team now? Part, yes. If this doesn't work, See if the part will talk to the subconscious or problem solve. Number 10, the part will no longer be able to protect the main personality. Therapist, are you afraid you will no longer be able to protect the personality by giving the intrusions? Part, yes. Therapist, when a part intrudes with emotion or by putting words into the conscious part of the main personality, it disrupts the here and now. This intrusion distorts the emotions or thoughts in the active experience and reduces the chance for creating a response to get more satisfaction and less pain. See figure 3-18, page 70. For example, one, suppose you were going for a job interview and the interviewer looked like someone who hurt you when you were small. If the sight of them elicits a rush of rage, you might not be able to give a good interview and get the job. The emotion wasn't suitable for the here and now and interfered with getting satisfaction by giving a good interview. The important protective aspect of this intruding part is its knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Therefore, by treating your pain and joining your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding with the main personality, the whole personality could now assess the situation using all recent experiences. The outcome would reveal the man was not the same person as the perpetrator. Then you would do your best in the interview. Two, we have all met men who project. No one is going to tell me what to do. This is a belief caused by trauma. He learned this belief when someone told or forced him to do something terrible or painful. An experience like this sometimes results in the immediate creation of this belief. This belief is the reason many trauma survivors lose their jobs. They react to instructions from a superior and impulsively quit or hit the supervisor. This common issue can be easily treated. The subconscious can treat the trauma, remove the pain that makes the belief true, and create and strengthen the self-empowering belief to replace it. After treatment, this belief is no longer a problem. Would you like to join the treatment team? Part, yes. Number 11, there will be more inter inner conflicts. Therapist, does this part think that by joining the treatment team, there will be more conflict between parts? Part, yes. Therapist, this is a legitimate worry. However, 
I think if all parts want treatment, want to join the main personality, and want to work in consensus, there will be fewer or no conflicts. All the parts want the same goal and would want to cooperate to get it. Does this make sense? Part, yes. Therapist, would you be willing to join the treatment team? Part, yes. Number 12, a weak little part fears not being honored by the big parts. Therapist, is there a wee little part that thinks the treatment team members will not listen to you if you vote no? Part, yes. Therapist, you have to know that all members of the treatment team have agreed to respect every other part and you will be respected. Are you willing to join the treatment team now? Part, yes. Sometimes you have to ask the subconscious if the treatment team members will honor this little part to demonstrate that the little part that this is true. Number 13, part wants to wait and see. Therapist, does this part want to wait and see what the treatment process or joining with the main personality looks like? Part, yes. Therapist, would you be willing to join the treatment team and allow the subconscious to learn the treatment process? Part, yes. Therapist, great. Please join the treatment team. Subconscious, yes. Sometimes this doesn't work. Part, no. Therapist, would you be willing to let the subconscious learn the treatment plan and then watch and listen to see how the treatment process works before you decide joining the treatment team? Part, yes. Number 14, parts want to know what the subconscious is going to learn before joining. Therapist, is there a part that wants to know what the subconscious is going to learn before considering joining the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, most parts fear receiving treatment against their will or don't want to lose control. What the subconscious is going to learn are the mechanics of replacing pain emotions with neutral to positive emotions. All the other basic treatment strategies and safeguards are described before teaching the subconscious. More important is whether you want more satisfaction and less pain. Would you be willing to reconsider your decision to not join the treatment team and let the subconscious learn the treatment method? Subconscious, yes. Number 15, a part wants treatment now. Therapist, is there a part that wants treatment now? Part, yes. Therapist, would you be willing to join the treatment team and later we will try to have you treated first? Part, yes. Make note that you have agreed to treat a part first after teaching the subconscious the treatment process. Number 16, a part is worried about losing social relationships. Therapist, is there a part that is worried about losing all your social relationships with other parts? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, well, if you look around, you will see many of your friends have joined the treatment team. Your relationship will change after getting treatment and joining with the main personality. The difference is that you'll be, you will all be getting what you want, namely more satisfaction and less pain. You all will, will work together without conflict to achieve this goal would you be willing to join the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Number 17, a brief statement resolving the barriers lifted above. When talking to the subconscious doesn't work or there is no communication or when a part wants information for treat about treatment from me, I use this brief statement that includes the resolution for all of the barriers. Therapist, do you want me to tell you about the treatment process? Part, yes. Therapist, no one is going to die. 
Treatment simply removes all the pain from your memories. The subconscious treats small pieces of pain and then pauses a few seconds before treating again. This ensures that the big pain will not flood the active experience or awaken other parts. If you are worried that the content of old memories will traumatize the main personality, the subconscious can dissociate traumatic memories so they will be unavailable to the conscious mind. After joining the treatment team, all parts, even the smallest, weakest part, will vote on a treatment plan for each part to decide the amount of pain treated and the duration of the pause between treatments. The subconscious and you adjust the treatment process to be very slow and safe. After treatment, the subconscious will first strengthen all your positive coping behaviors with positive emotions. Then you and the main personality will share your knowledge, wisdom, and understanding with each other until they are the same. With identical memories, you will all be able to run the body at the same time with the main personality without having any conflicts. You will still be able to protect the personality, but without emotions from the past distorting the present. You will all work together to get more satisfaction and less pain. Are you willing to join the treatment team? Part, yes. Summary, you have just read a list of ways to resolve barriers to joining the treatment team. You will use this list later when you problem solve to get all aspects to join the treatment team. When searching for the barrier, you can simply go down the list in order presented one by one. With each barrier, question the part to find out if that barrier is keeping the part from wanting treatment. It won't be long before you have some intuition about which barrier it is most likely to cause the, for the block. Remember, there can be more than one barrier blocking a part from wanting treatment. The subconscious will learn to do the same procedure. 3-6, learning to communicate with the subconscious. Most people will not run into problems in either communicating with the subconscious or getting all their aspects on the treatment team. It is entirely normal to have some or many aspects or parts, and this makes organizing the treatment team a creative problem-solving process. We are all different and sometimes unknown complex memories can present barriers involving great fear. Remember, be alert for signs that suggest that your subconscious or some part is advising you to not continue reading this book. Read this section carefully. Before you start. Before you teach the treatment process to your subconscious, you will have to read the following to protect you from any negative outcomes. It's unlikely there will be a problem. Trauma-based aspects and the subconscious will not usually do anything that will hurt the main personality of the reader or someone else, especially when the parts know what's happening. Before continuing with this section, I want you to pay attention to your emotional state and internal conversations. With severe trauma, known or unknown, I feel confident that you will know by some emotion be it fear or anxiety, or by an internal voice, not to continue reading. If you have any reservations, find a therapist before continuing. If you have had severe trauma in your past, or have been sent to a hospital for a mental issue, or have taken medication for any serious mental problems, I want you to consult with a competent, competent therapist before learning the treatment process. Be cautious if you have any intrusive thoughts or experiences. If you are in therapy, discuss this treatment process with your therapist. The subconscious is always awake and is listening to everything. You can always talk to the subconscious. 
there is no way to block this. Arranging to have the subconscious talk back to you can be much more of a problem. Now, I want to remind all your aspects that the subconscious will not learn the treatment process until all aspects of the personality agree to it. Before we start, here's how to think about talking to parts. The main personality has memories that allow it to work normally while it is, in, while it is running the body. Well, during an extended trauma caused by someone that involves life-threatening pain, the basic neural structure is creating behavior just as it does for the main personality. The development of an amnesic part will include many of these same behaviors used by the main personality. However, the trauma memory will be amnesic from the main personality. Here's what's interesting. The trauma part may look like the main personality to the perpetrator of the trauma because the trauma part is behaving in all the same ways that the main personality behaves. This includes thinking. Parts can behave and think like the main personality, so you can communicate with them as you do with yourself. For example, a four-year-old part is like a four-year-old main personality. You speak to a four-year-old part with a four-year-old vocabulary. You can communicate and ask a part questions just as you would ask in a 20 questions parlor game. First, let's learn to communicate with the subconscious. There are three ways I prefer to communicate with the subconscious. The first means to communicate is to use muscle response with the fingers or a pendulum. This technique used by a trained hypnotherapist, Poulos 1994, the finger movements are called idiomotor responses. You can either you can use either patient or therapist to find idiomotor responses to communicate with the subconscious and the parts. With the pendulum, the subconscious can cause fine muscle responses to get the pendulum to move in different directions to communicate. More on this later. There are two other ways to communicate with the internal voice and novel responses. I'll explain using the fingers first. Therapist. Now we're going to try to communicate with the subconscious. Please lay your hands palm down next to you on the couch, on your knees in, or in front of you on a table. Let them relax. I am going to ask some questions while you remain relaxed. Be curious about the process and see whether a finger response will occur. Don't make conscious finger movements. After I ask a question, you will feel a response or a tickle in one of your fingers. I initially wait up to 30 seconds because different people respond at different rates, some quickly and some slowly. If you feel a tickle or sensation that I can't see, then move your finger so I can see. Otherwise, I might hallucinate a response. With practice, this will be easy. Some therapists think that it is good to let the patient define the response. I don't do this because I have many patients and having different responses for different patients would confuse me. For those readers interested in patient determined responses, here is what I say to get the patient to define the responses. One, patient defined responses. Therapist, subconscious, I'm going to ask you to communicate with me by moving your fingers. Please show me a yes response. Wait about 20 seconds. Some responses are quick and others are slow. If you get a response, write down the name of the finger and continue. Therapist, subconscious, please show me a no response. Usually a different finger will give you a sensation or will move. Write down which finger signaled a no. Now you do the same for the following two questions. Therapist, subconscious, please show me an I don't know response. 
write down this response and go on to the next question. Therapist. Subconscious, please show me an I don't want to tell you response. I hope that you will have four unique finger sensations or responses that you can use to help you problem solve any issue that may arise. Then say, therapist, no response is a response in itself. I interpret no response as I'm not talking. When there is a combination of responses, there is either a mixed message or several parts responding. If you try to get a response several times and find it not working, teach the responses you want to communicate yes, no, and so forth. Number two, therapist defined responses. Therapist. Subconscious, let's define the index finger for yes, the thumb for no, the little finger or pinky finger for I don't know, and uh, the middle finger for I don't want to tell you. Now move your fingers on both hands as I go through the responses. This is the yes finger. Move both index fingers up and down several times. This is the no finger. Move your thumbs. This is the I don't know finger. Move your little finger and the I don't want to tell you finger. Move the middle finger. Now try it out to see if you can communicate with a part or the subconscious. Therapist, subconscious, please show me a yes response. Sometimes the fingers on both the right and left hand will move. When this happens, I often wonder if one of the fingers is being moved by a pre-birth part. See section 3-5-8. Subconscious, yes. Oh, happy day, the index finger moves. Therapist, subconscious, please show me a no response. Subconscious no response or wrong finger. Remind the patient that he or she should move any finger in which there are sensations, otherwise problem solve. Therapist, is there a part blocking communication or responding with a no? Part, no response. Reaffirm your plan to not teach the subconscious how to teach trauma, how to treat trauma, until the parts, until all the parts are on the treatment team. Try again with further problem solving. Therapist, is there a part blocking communication or responding with a no? Subconscious, no, thumb moves. Therapist, subconscious, please show me an I don't know response. Subconscious, no response or wrong finger. Problem solve. Subconscious. I don't know, little finger moves. Therapist, subconscious, please show me an I don't want to tell you response. Subconscious, no response or wrong finger, problem solve. Subconscious, I don't want to tell you, middle finger moved. I point out the following to the patient. Therapist, no response is a response. In itself, I interpret no response as any response other than yes, no, I don't know, and I don't want to tell you. When the ring finger moves, I interpret this as somewhere between I don't want to tell you and I don't know. Sometimes I have to encourage the patient not to move the fingers voluntarily and to remain relaxed and curious about whether a finger moves. Other times when I don't see a response, I have to encourage the person to move the finger if he or she feels any sensation in them. Sometimes I see the tendon in the hand moving. If nothing works, I give the instructions for fingers to respond for finger responses again. I reaffirm that no one will be treated until all parts on the treatment team, and they give me permission to teach the subconscious 
the treatment process. Number three, communicating with a pendulum. The second way to communicate with the subconscious and aspects is to use a pendulum. I find an object like a 5 16 self-locking nut, my preference for personal use, and tie a green string to it. Green symbolizes health. But the string can be any color. Anything can serve as a weight. Make the string about three or four inches long. Now, while holding the pendulum still and concentrating to keep it still, ask your subconscious the questions given about for patient-determined responses. For example, show me a yes. After each question, wait until the pendulum moves in some direction. My pendulum moves out and back for a yes, sideways for a no, clockwise for I don't know, and counterclockwise for I don't want to tell you. If it is a stationary, if it is stationary, it means some part is blocking the response. Artists and technicians with well-developed mind, fine muscle control may not have success with this approach. Sometimes it takes practice to get responses with the pendulum. Initially, I didn't have finger responses and I had to rely on the pendulum to access my subconscious. Number four, communicating with internal responses. The third way to communicate with the subconscious is to either imagine a pad or chalkboard in your mind and have your subconscious write a yes or no on it, or to request to get an auditory yes or no in your thoughts. I prefer the finger approach, but if you are working on your own, try to get conscious contact with the subconscious. If you form pictures in your conscious mind easily, see if your subconscious can write on a blackboard, a tablet, or a computer screen. Therapist, subconscious, please write a yes on a blackboard. If you see a yes, play with it and practice making it brighter and dimmer just to develop the awareness that you can control the image. Then ask for a no and other responses. I don't know and I don't want to tell you. If you get these responses easily and clearly, then this means of communication will work well for you. Sometimes people get extra communication by seeing or hearing sentences as a visual or auditory response. If you are lucky, the subconscious can explain or direct the treatment in sentence form by writing it out on your blackboard or by giving you words that you can hear. The subconscious can be humorous. If it is hard for you to form pictures in your mind, Try communicating with the sub subconscious through auditory responses by quieting your thoughts and asking for a response in your thoughts. Asking the following questions and listen for a yes or a no. Subconscious, please give me a yes in my thoughts so I can hear it. If you hear the yes response, See if you can reliably tell the difference between your own thoughts and the subconscious. Explore asking your subconscious for other responses, namely, no, I don't know, and I don't want to tell you, to see if auditory responses will work for you to communicate with the subconscious. Number five, other means of communication. When working with a patient who has difficult parts that block communication, with the subconscious, it is possible to obtain communication with the subconscious with other unusual responses for yes and no. For example, with one patient who had some sort of programming, the deliberate creation of parts, my colleague and I were able to not alert the parts by teaching the subconscious to give a yes response by making a sneer with her left upper lip. This worked well for communication and we had some success working with her complex structures. Summary, most people can obtain communication and rapport with their subconscious. 
However, if you are having trouble and are not able to set up rapport with your subconscious, reread sections 3-3 through 3-5 and try this section again. If repeated tries at communicating with your subconscious are unsuccessful, you can assume that some aspect or part is blocking the communication. With continuing problems, do this. Therapist, can I talk with the part that is blocking communication with the subconscious? Subconscious, no. Continue with problem solving in the way described in section 3-5. When there is no response for 30 seconds. Therapist, does the part that is blocking communication want more satisfaction and less pain? Continue to systematically try to resolve the barrier to treatment, and you will eventually resolve the barrier and set up contact with your subconscious. If all else fails and you still want to treat your issues, consider finding a competent therapist. Get the names of competent therapists from your local mental health department or your local woman's sanctuary. These resources can give you a number of therapists to interview to see which will be suitable for you. You can always check out my earlier book, Emotional Freedom, Flint 2001, to see if emotional freedom techniques are something you would like to try. It is based on the same theory, but you do have the tapping on the outside to cause the treatment of issues. In that book, there is a chapter on inner self inner self healing that works with many people. If all went well and you have communication with your subconscious, continue to the following section. 3-7, assessing readiness for learning the treatment process. Practice communicating with your subconscious and get comfortable with your form of communication. It is important to know that any form of communication with your subconscious is subject to many influences and can result in an untrue answer. Always be aware that other parts can interfere with responses. Remember, just try to be curious and deliberately avoid having any interest in the outcome of your questions to the subconscious. Remind all your aspects, though you might not have any amnesic parts, that you want them all to join the treatment team. Before you consider, think of the practice issue and ask. Therapist, think of the practice issue, subconscious. Is it safe to use the practice issue that we identify to test the treatment process? Subconscious, yes, continue, or subconscious, no. Look for some other issue that is less painful and check again with your subconscious. When your subconscious says the issue is safe to use, continue. When you think that all your aspects are on the treatment team, you can find out if this is true with the following three questions. Question one, therapist. Subconscious, are all the aspects and parts members of the treatment team? Subconscious. Yes, then continue. When you get a no, problem solve. Question two, therapist. Do, do all the treatment team members want the subconscious to learn the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. Continue or subconscious, no. This calls for problem solving. I start by asking, therapist, is there a wee little baby part that is afraid? If you get a no or no response, ask the following. Therapist, is this part afraid of big pain or worried that your trauma memory will re-traumatize the main personality? Continue problem solving and clearing barriers. Then when it appears that all parts are on the treatment team, start with question one again. When you get a yes to questions one and two, Continue with question three by asking the confusing double negative sentence in a demanding voice. Question three, you mean there are no parts that don't want the treatment process to be taught? Subconscious, yes. 
you immediately go to the next section and treat the treatment process and teach the treatment process. If you wait, then another uneducated part might wake up. Subconscious, no. Therapist, can I talk to the part that has some considerations about joining the treatment team? Part, yes. You may have to reassure the part that the subconscious will not treat any part until it gives permission. Continue problem solving the barriers and repeat questions one and two until you get a yes to question three. Then continue to treat, then continue to teach the treatment process. When I keep getting no, I start worrying that the patient is responding with what he or she thinks is the correct answer. If you experience this, don't prompt the correct answer. I have often been wrong in my suspicion and found that a part was saying no. 3-8, learning the treatment process. Read the section after you get total agreement to all your aspects. This is the section where your subconscious learns the treatment process. Therapy. The subconscious will learn how to treat using an internal treatment process. No hypnosis, trance, or any other indirected means is necessary. I want you to be alert and aware of what you are reading. Read it with curiosity. This treatment process is taught by using a simple 20-second metaphor. The metaphor teaches a treatment process based on thought field therapy, a tapping therapy developed by Dr. Roger Callahan, Callahan, 1985, 1991, 2001. Later, you will learn how to improve the treatment process to get the subconscious to treat issues throughout the day and how to treat specific issues. Now, I want to teach the subconscious the treatment process. Double check so you will be sure that all aspects of your personality approve teaching the subconscious how to treat pain. Look for a yes with the next three questions before you continue. Therapist, can I talk to the subconscious? Subconscious. Yes. Yes, number one. Therapist, do all aspects of your personality want to learn the treatment process now? Subconscious. Yes. Yes, number two. The following double negative sentence tricks the parts with objections to respond no. The subconscious, on the other hand, will respond yes. Therapist, you mean there are no parts that don't have any objections to teaching the subconscious the treatment process. Subconscious, yes. Yes, number three. With yes to these questions, you can continue. Otherwise, with any other response, it would be best to return to the last section or if necessary, to reread the section starting at section 3-3. If you continue and teach the treatment process without getting yes responses to the three questions above, it may be disrespectful to some aspects of your personality, and these aspects may become barriers to treatment. Now you will read the metaphor that teaches the treatment process. The treatment metaphor for process healing. Therapist. Draw the figure 3-22 as you describe the treatment metaphor. Subconscious, imagine the brain is a soccer field, a smooth playing field with no bumps. When the phobia, negative belief, painful memory, or part becomes active and moves into the playing field, gopher holes pop up in a particular sequence. Gophers are animals that burrow underground and push to the surface, leaving mounds of dirt. You can treat the emotion by remembering the sequence of gopher holes and gradually smoothing the, the dirt over each hole a little at a time with a feather in the remembered sequence repeatedly 
until the gopher holes disappear. Wait a few seconds. Therapist, subconscious, do you understand how to diagnose and treat a painful memory? Usually I get a yes. When I get a no, I initially assume that a pre-birth part awakened and is responding to me. Pre-birth parts can learn to respond for the subconscious and respond with a no because they aren't able to work like the subconscious and don't fully understand how to do the treatment process. If the subconscious continues to fail to understand, then therapist, is a pre-birth part responding to the subconscious? Part, yes. Therapist, can I talk directly to the subconscious? At this point, you may have to problem solve to get cooperation from the part causing the communication problem. See section 3-3 through 3-5. When you are convinced that you have direct communication with the subconscious, ask. Therapist, subconscious, can you diagnose and treat the practice issue? Subconscious, yes. Explain to the patient what you want. Therapist, I want you simply to focus on the practice issue and experience your emotions. See if you ex can experience the hurt gradually decrease after asking, subconscious, please treat this issue. On the other hand, subconscious, no. Therapist, subconscious, should we look for a different practice issue? Subconscious, no. Therapist, is there a barrier to the treatment? Subconscious, yes. Go to section 3-5 and problem solve to find out if parts are blocking the treatment process. Though I believe subconscious, the subconscious hears the metaphor regardless of whether there is a barrier. Sometimes I have reread the paragraph teaching the treatment process to the patient. If you experience the painful emotions of your practice issue going to zero, congratulations. It's a remarkable experience. Sometimes there are parts that prevent the emotion from going to zero. If you felt the issue reduce from eight to five, for example, and stop changing, you may have parts with pains to problem solve and treat. Start off with therapist, subconscious, are there parts active or blocking the treatment process who are giving the remaining pain? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, do, do these parts want treatment? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat those parts one after the other. When there is a no and the parts don't want treatment, then continue to resolve any barriers until all the barriers are treated. When the subconscious finishes treatment, you will feel the painful emotions for your practice issue become less intense or gone. Your subconscious can now treat trauma issues. Next, you and your subconscious will learn how to problem solve and resolve all barriers that can arise while treating some traumatic issues. 3-9, resolving barriers to treatment. When there are barriers to treatment, the brain is disorganized and the treatment process does not work. The information given below will help the subconscious or therapist problem solve to resolve the barrier that is causing the disorganization. When problem solving, if the part has problems about joining the treatment team, you may have to try all the reasons for treatment described previously in sections 3-3 and 3-5. I listed additional barriers below in order from most often used interventions to least used interventions. Of course, having this list is not going to remove the fun of problem solving because human personalities can learn surprising and complicated patterns that block treatment. Later chapters describe complex memory structures. 
Suppose that all aspects have joined the treatment team and your subconscious is actively treating aspects and painful memories. You can check in with your subconscious to find out if the treatment process is progressing. You can find this out by asking, therapist, subconscious, is the treatment going well? Subconscious, yes, or subconscious, no. You will have to problem solve to resolve a barrier. The following barriers can block the treatment process. I describe each barrier with the general approach I use to resolve it. They are listed in descending order from most frequently to the least frequently observed barrier. One, a part is talking for the subconscious. Therapist, is there a part talking for the subconscious? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, is this a pre-birth part? Subconscious, no. Continue problem solving. Follow the problem solving strategy described in section 3-3 and using the information from this section. Subconscious, yes. You have an active pre-birth part. Pre-birth parts learn to relay information from the subconscious to the main personality. They are often the parts that talk for the subconscious. Therapist, pre-birth part. I know that your role in the personality has been useful, but your trauma and emotional pain will cause you to give distorted information to the main personality. You have much knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. If your pain is treated and good coping skills are strengthened with positive emotions and you join with the main personality, you will be more effective in protecting the main personality from pain and in finding more satisfaction. Are you willing to accept treatment? Part, no. Therapist, after treatment, you can join with the main personality. And when this happens, you can run the body with the main, personal, with the main personality and have no conflicts. Would you like treatment now? Part, yes. If the response is no, review the adv advantages of treatment. See sections 3-3 with the part causing the barrier. Two, parts are active. Therapist, subconscious, are there parts active in the active experience? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, do they want to join the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, Please join the tre treatment team. It would help if you left the active experience and put your eyes and ears into watch what's happening. I always intend to ask treatment team members to leave the active experience and put their eyes and ears in. This I assume reduces activity in the active experience. However, there are usually other aspects to deal with before you get all aspects on the treatment team. Subconscious, no. Therapist, to save time. Are you willing to talk with the representative of the treatment team or the subconscious to learn all you need to know about the healing process? In this way, you can make an informed decision about whether to be treated. I usually shorten this to talk to the subconscious, with, which usually works. With parts that are not communicating or with no response, I try to trigger any kind of response. It appears that any response helps the part to be willing to talk with the subconscious. Part, after several attempts to establish communication, yes. Therapist, subconscious, does this part want treatment? Part, yes, or part, no. Therapist, does this part have pain so big that he or she is afraid to have it treated? Part, yes. Go to the next barrier. Three, pain is too great. Therapist, does this part have big, big pain? Part, yes. Therapist, does this part know that the rate of treatment and the rest period between treatments can be adjusted to make the treatment process very safe? 
part, no. Therapist, are you willing to talk to a representative of the treatment team or the subconscious to get an explanation? Part, yes. Otherwise, explain again about the treatment process and how safe it is. Refer to the treatment figure 3-20 and draw the figure to explain the treatment process. With a no, ask. Therapist, is this a fragile part that has so much pain that you fear flooding the conscious experience? Subconscious, yes. If it is a fragile part, explain the treatment interventions for fragile parts while drawing figure 3-21. Number four, I want treatment now. Therapist, do you want treatment now? Part, yes. Therapist, are you a member of the treatment team? Part, no. Therapist, Will you join the treatment team and be willing to be treated when the team decides it's best for you? Part, no. Therapist, subconscious, would it be safe to treat this part right now and then, can treat, then continue treating the other parts later? Subconscious, yes. With a no, problem solve. You might have to use all your negotiating skills to resolve this issue. When there are two or more parts active and they both want treatment first, you can try the following. Therapist, subconscious, is there a conflict between parts that want treatment right now? Part, yes. Therapist, can you all decide among yourselves the order of treatment? Treatment only takes a few moments. Or, subconscious, can you help them decide by telling them that treatment will only take each of them a few minutes. This may be a time to be creative and find some intervention to resolve the conflict. I have resolved conflicts by having the parts draw straws. Number five, part doesn't want treatment. Therapist, is this a part that doesn't want treatment? Part, yes. Therapist, would you be willing to talk with the subconscious to find out all the information you need to make an informed decision about whether you want treatment? Part, yes. Therapist, great, do that. Sometimes it's not this easy. Part, no. Therapist, did a part just wake up? Part, yes. Parts can awaken during the treatment process when you are communicating with the subconscious. In this case, you can use the strategies provided in this section to problem solve any barrier. Encourage the part to join the treatment team. Usually the part will want more satisfaction and less pain and be willing to join the treatment team. Number six, treat physiology first. Healing the physiology refers to a remembered neural connection between the trauma memory and the midbrain. This neural connection causes the midbrain to become sensitive to active emotions of trauma. When the midbrain is sensitive, all the trauma emotions of the part can be easily triggered into the active experience. When the neural connection to the midbrain is treated first, then you can treat the emotions of the issue more safely. At this point, I seldom do this, but in the early years, I was always using this intervention to ensure the treatment process was safe. Therapist, subconscious, do I have to separate the content of the memory from the physiology connected to the midbrain to teach this issue safely? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, should I treat the physiology first before treating the content of the issue? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, is it safe to do that now? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat the physiology. Sometimes, for some reason, the content has to be treated first. After treating the physiology, ask. 
Subconscious, please treat the content of the issue. Number seven, stored reversal. Stored reversal is a, ver is a barrier that occasionally reveals itself. I seldom treat stored reversal. However, even though I don't do this intervention much anymore, I believe that my subconscious does it when necessary. This, the disuse of some interventions is caused by the subconscious communicating in another way. Flint and D. Therapy. Therapist. Is there a barrier stopping the treatment? You would do the usual problem solving and when you want out ideas, ask. Subconscious. Is this barrier caused by stored reversal? Subconscious. Yes. I usually explain that I am talking about the patient and have him or her do the intervention. Therapist. The corpus callosum is a structure that connects the right and left hemispheres of your brain. Usually the front has a positive charge and the back has a negative charge. When the polarity of the corpus callosum is reversed, learning fails to occur. It appears as though this polarity reversal can be stored with act, aspects of memory. Then when you trigger the memory into the active experience, it causes the reversed condition. The treatment process will not work. The way to treat this condition, see figure 3-23, is to have the patient place the back of his or her hand on the sternum with the thumb down and tap on the palm five times. This corrects the reversal and the treatment process can resume. The subconscious can learn to perform this correction after the demonstration. This technique is an intervention that simply works and may have no known connection to scientific fact. Now you can put put the back of your hand on your sternum and tap on your palm five times. After the patient finishes, asks, subconscious, is the barrier removed? Subconscious, yes. If you have done this correction before, you can simply ask your subconscious to do it. Therapist, subconscious, please correct the stored reversal. Number eight wants more pain and less satisfaction. Therapist, do you want more pain and less satisfaction? Part, yes. Therapist, do you mean that you find that choosing to have pain makes the pain you feel less painful? Part, yes. Therapist, well, the pain you continue to avoid is pain that you learned many years ago. If you treat that pain in a way that doesn't hurt you, the main personality or any other aspects of the personality, you won't have to choose it anymore. Would you be willing to have your pain treated and have your positive quality strengthen and to join the main personality? Part, yes. Continue your treatment intervention or part, no. Therapist, would you be willing to talk with the subconscious and get all the information that you need to make an informed decision about being treated? Usually you get a yes. Otherwise, do the usual problem solving. Number nine, a belief is blocking the choice to be treated. Therapist, subconscious, is there a belief in this part that is blocking the choice to be treated? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can I ask the subconscious to treat beliefs that are barriers to treatment? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, great. On the other hand, if the subconscious says no, therapist, part, if I ask the subconscious to treat that belief without asking you, would you be upset? Part, no. Therapist, subconscious, please treat the belief. Subconscious, yes. 
then continue to problem solve to find and resolve the barrier. Number 10, part without eyes or ears. Sometimes parts formed in utero or at birth, as strange as it seems, don't have eyes and ears. Therapist, subconscious, is there a part without eyes and ears? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can you communicate with that part? Subconscious, yes. Problem solve to see if you can treat or part easily, the part easily. Problem solve if you can treat the part easily or subconscious, no. In this case, I imagine a part without eyes and ears moving in the act of experience, which stops the subconscious from communicating or treating the part. I assume that the subconscious could create neural activity that could slow or stop the part from moving. Therapist, can you create the neural activity to slow the part to a standstill and either communicate with or treat that part? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, can you treat that part now? Subconscious, yes. Then continue to resolve other barriers and have the subconscious treat the part. Number 11, a part's emotions are active but its other senses are dormant. Therapist, is there a part active, but the eyes and ears are not active? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, I would like to ask the part that use emotions are active to come into the active experience. Can I now talk to that part? Part, yes. Therapist, do you want to join the treatment team? Part. Yes, otherwise problem solve. Number 12, toxic substances are disorganizing the brain. I seldom see this, but when I did see toxic effects, the subconscious was able to treat them so they didn't interfere with the treatment process. Therapist, subconscious, is there some toxic effect that is blocking treatment? Subconscious. Yes. Therapist, can you isolate the to toxic effect from the memory, treat it separately, and then treat the content of the part? Subconscious. Yes. Number 13, drug trauma is blocking the treatment process. Therapist, subconscious, is there a drug effect that is blocking your ability to treat the part? Subconscious. Yes. Therapist, can you separate the drug, of, drug effect from the content and emotions treated and then treat the content and emotions of the part? Subconscious, yes. Number 14, part continues to refuse treatment or to respond even after asking all of the above questions. I am using this intervention more often because it saves time. It doesn't seem to cause any problems. However, I make sure that I continue to respect those parts that are not willing to be treated without giving permission. Therapist, I want this part to know that I am only going to accept a yes response as a yes and all other responses as a no. If I ask the subconscious to treat you without getting your permission to treat you, would you be angry with me? I usually get a no. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, well, I am not going to ask the subconscious to treat you, but this, but would this part mind if I ask the subconscious to treat the belief that is getting in the way of communication? Subconscious, no, or no response. Therapist, subconscious, please treat that belief that gets in the way of communication. Sometimes this works and I continue to treat the part when it doesn't work, I continue with the usual problem solving approach or try the following. Therapist, subconscious. If I asked you to treat the part without asking the part and the part got angry with me, would it be in the patient's best interest to treat the part anyway? Subconscious, yes. I try to avoid using this part. 
this approach, but when nothing works, I have used it effectively. Summary. This section gave you many examples and resolutions as possible barriers that get in the way of the treatment process. The first few examples are in the list are the interventions that you can test first. You are less likely to find the barrier to treatment as you try examples further down the list. Again, I give these techniques mainly for therapists to use with patients with personalities that are more complex. When a therapist uses process healing enough, he or she gradually develop, develops an intuition that helps find the barrier more easily. Therapists and patients will find that after using this technique for several months, resolving barriers becomes less of an issue as your treatment skills become enriched. As trust is set up, your patient's subconscious appears to learn and use your current treatment skills. This is discussed in Flint ND. Now, if treatment of your practice issue did not work, here is what to do. Therapist, subconscious, can you diagnose and treat the practice issue now? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, please do that. Therapist, addressing the person, simply focus on the issue and see if you can experience the emotions gradually decrease. Can you feel any change in the emotions? Subconscious, no. Therapist, subconscious, do you understand how to diagnose and treat pain? Subconscious, no. This is unusual. Start problem solving. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, is there a barrier preventing the treatment? Subconscious, yes. Do one of the following. Look for pre-birth parts or go back to the previous section and review the metaphor teaching the treatment process. You can review or reread this section to resolve any barriers to treating the issue. You can also ask the subconscious what to do by asking leading questions and possible solutions to get yes or no answers. Continue to the next section only after you have treated your practice issue. Remember, if your practice issue still has painful emotions associated with it, parts could be causing the emotions. The emotions should feel comfortable and normal after treating the issue. 3-10, the first interventions. This section will help you create treatment plans for each part on the treatment team. It will tell your subconscious subconscious of other support that is available to help in the treatment process. Finally, the subconscious will learn how to be able to automatically treat negative beliefs, memories, and experiences without involving the main personality. One, develop treatment plans. Therapist, subconscious, is it a good time to create treatment plans for all of the members on the treatment team? Subconscious, no. Therapist, is there some aspect that wants treatment immediately? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, is it safe to and politically okay to treat this aspect now? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, please treat this part. Subconscious, yes. Sometimes there is more problem solving to do, but generally you can continue to give the subconscious and the treatment team instructions about making treatment plans. Therapist, subconscious, and team members, remember the treatment plan has the rate of treatment and the rest time be between each treatment. Adjust the rate and the rest time for each part until all team members feel safe with the plan. If a fragile part is involved, select the treatment plan for the fragile parts. All team members vote to approve the treatment plans. The decisions are made in consensus, which means all parts 100% vote yes to accept each treatment plan for each part. However, 
each part is free to vote yes or no, depending on how safe he or she feels about the treatment plan. You will all have to negotiate to get consensus. When all members of the treatment team have a treatment plan, treating and integrating team members progresses in a safe, systematic, and orderly way. Subconscious, is it a good time to develop treatment plans for every member of the treatment team? Subconscious, yes. Of course, during the treatment process, uneducated parts may wake up demanding parts awaken or other issues can complicate, complicate the orderly progress of treatment. The approach to any barriers is described in the previous section. When there are many new parts that join the treatment team, it is good to develop team plans for all new members before continuing. In practice, when I convince a new part to accept treatment, I often ask the sub subconscious if it is safe to treat the part now, and then have the subconscious treat the part. Number two, resolve barriers to independent automatic treatment. Three conditions pre prevent the subconscious from automatically treating negative activity in the active experience. Chapters four and six discuss other less common barriers to automatic treatment. The first is similar to the difficulty found in treating alcoholics. When, a, when an alcoholic says, I want to quit drinking, I want to drink, is embedded in the statement. This triggers all of the positive and negative drinking memories into the active experience. This disorganizes the brain and blocks the treatment of the drinking urge. This same process happens when the subconscious tries to treat an issue. When the subconscious thinks, I want to treat that negative memory. All the memories having to do with getting treatment are elicited into the active experience by the embedded phrase, I want to treat. The memories are going to mother, father, the doctor, dentist for treatment and so forth become active and the active experience becomes disorganized. With all these active memories, treatment by the subconscious cannot take place. These intrusive memories from other treatment experiences can be treated because negative emotions are the motivation for this intrusions. After treating the negative emotion associated with past experiences, the memories will not intrude or come into the active experience when the subconscious wants to treat something. Therapist, subconscious, please start this treatment at birth, before birth, or as far back as necessary. Treat from then to now all beliefs, memories, experiences, and parts that get in the way of the belief that I have a process within me and access to insight and knowledge to independently treat all memory structures on all levels that cause my mental and physical issues. Subconscious, can you do that? Some subconscious, yes. I usually get a yes. If you don't get a yes, problem solve. Check periodically to see if the subconscious is finished. Therapist, subconscious, have you finished doing the change history? Subconscious, yes or no. The second barrier to automatic treatment is habits called predispositions. When a ne negative aspect becomes active, there is a memory that causes a habitual response, a predisposition, to deal with any negative aspects that come into the active experience. The predisposition conflicts with the subconscious when the subconscious tries to do treatment in the active experience. This conflict becomes a barrier to automatic treatment. The subconscious cannot treat the negative experience. You can treat this barrier in the following way. Therapist, subconscious, I want you to identify all predispositions responding to negative memories that cause the conflict with the subconscious. Please treat the predispositions so they will no longer occur when a negative mem memory becomes active. Subconscious, yes. Finally, 
Sometimes there are massive beliefs that prevent the subconscious from doing treatment. Ask the following to clear those beliefs. Therapist, subconscious, please clear all massive beliefs that interfere with treating negative issues in the active experience. Subconscious, yes. With these changes done, your subconscious should be able to treat most negative beliefs, experiences, and memories that come into your active experience. Therapist, subconscious, do you have the ability to treat issues independently and as needed? Subconscious, yes. I usually get a yes, and when I don't, I suspect a part is talking for the subconscious. If all goes well, you will find your daily attitude becoming increasingly positive as the subconscious spontaneously treats negative beliefs, memories, and thoughts. Ask your subconscious now and then to see if he or she is still able to treat automatically. If not, problem solve. Number three, put the subconscious into overdrive. Now that the subconscious has learned the treatment process and the treatment team members all have the treatment plans, the following may facilitate the effectiveness of the subconscious. You won't understand this intervention, C. Flint and D, but it's my impression that this is a good to do at, but this is good to do at this time. Jesus was known as a powerful healer, healer and his subconscious can serve as a consultant to your subconscious. Because you have not been led to think that this might be possible, if you think that I am suggesting it's too weird to believe, just skip it. Otherwise, read or say the request and notice whether you feel some activity in your brain. Subconscious. Please treat any beliefs that get in the way of communicating with and getting help from the subconscious of Jesus and compose and strengthen self-empowering beliefs in their place. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, please look around and contact the subconscious of Jesus. Subconscious, yes. Wait. Therapist, have subconscious, have you made contact? Subconscious, yes. If no, do further problem solving. Number four, connect with other treatment support. Four different field or energy sources allegedly help with the treatment process. I will describe them to your subconscious and then ask the subconscious if he or she can use this energy source to help with treatment. I have no idea if any of this connects to reality. It is my impression that since I have been pointing out these supportive fields, the treatment is going faster. If you get a no, a part is usually intruding and you will have to stop and treat the part. A, heart field, Therap therapist, subconscious, I am going to connect you with four field sources that may help the treatment process. The first is to use the heart field in the treatment process. The field of the heart is 5,000 times stronger than the field of any other organ in the body. Pearson, 1998. When the heartbeat is in the active experience, then the heart field is easily used in the treatment process. When your subconscious is treating an issue, you may feel your heart involved in the treatment process. Subconscious, will you include the heartbeat in the active experience and use the heart field in the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, does the heart energy help the treatment process? I usually always get a yes. Subconscious, yes. When I get a no with any of these sources, when I expect a yes, I usually find that there is a pre-birth part or some other part has awakened and is interfering with the response. B, field receptors on the skin. Therapist, the second process is based on the notions involved with therapeutic touch. Have you ever experienced therapeutic touch? Part, no. Therapist, well, to, experiences, here's, to experience it, here is what you do. 
Have someone move the palm of their hand just over your shoulders and then slowly move their hand two inches off your arm, down your arm to your fingertips. Do this in four to five seconds. Have them do this repeatedly. Usually you will feel a sensation as the hand moves down your arm. The electric field from your hand is presumably stimulating field receptors in your skin. It is said that these field receptors are sensitive to the fields of all those who love and care for you and all who love and care for humanity. Krieger, 1993. In fact, some believe that this treatment process uses all positive fields from past generations. Subconscious, can you take this positive information from the field receptives from the entire surface of your body and use this field to help the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, in this field, a positive contribution to the treatment process? Again, therapist, subconscious, is this field a positive contribution to the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. I almost always get a yes. C, brain stem. Therapist, the third source is a field that enters through the brain stem. Subconscious, can you use the field that enters through the brain stem in the treatment process? I usually get a yes. Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, is this a positive field to use in the treatment process? Again, I always get a yes. Subconscious, yes. D, pineal gland. Therapist, the fourth field source that is seemingly helpful with the treatment process is a field produced by the pineal gland. Subconscious, can you use the field from the pineal gland in the treatment process? Subconscious, yes. Therapist, subconscious, is this field a positive field for use with the treatment process? I almost always get a yes. Subconscious, yes. Summary. There you have it. You have just finished a series of sections where you have had the opportunity to learn the process healing method. After you obtained a total agreement from yourself and all of your aspects, you taught your subconscious how to treat using an internal treatment process. No hypnosis, trance, or any other indirect means was necessary. A simple 20-second metaphor for treatment taught your subconscious the treatment process. The metaphor describes the internal process based on the tapping treatment I learned from studying thought field therapy, Callahan, 1993. A patient subconscious taught me that the subconscious can do the tapping without my involvement. If your personality was receptive to learning the process healing method, then you have a powerful self-healing tool that can last you a lifetime. It is easy to get upset and forget that by simply asking your subconscious to do the treatment, you can treat those upsets. You can use process healing with parenting, marital and job stress, even the stress of life. You can treat upsets with drivers, dogs, bugs, or people in your life with process healing. By consulting with your subconscious, you can change your emotions and thoughts about behavior that you don't like, such as attending school, work, and so forth. You can treat the self-limiting or negative beliefs and experiences and strengthen positive, self-empowering beliefs. To further clarify how to use the content in this chapter when working with yourself or someone else, reread the example in chapter two, starting on page 28. To relate the structure and contents of this chapter to the example. In chapter four, you will learn many interventions that you will need to help you address some issues more directly and completely.